い。はい。はい。<笑><笑> Alright, l all you unfortunate people out there, this is the Ungrown Ups. This is episode 84, otherwise known as the 84th episode. And I am Matthew. Across from me is Ryan. And to my right, we have a guest. It's Caddy Corner to my left. It is. Like he would be in the weird intersection. Yes, we have Nick coming back to join us. I think it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a long while, probably over a year. Which means probably like four episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the rate things are going currently. Yeah, that's about right. Oh, man. How have you been, Nicholas? I've been well. Good. I've been well. Yeah. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, well, I'm surprised you came back. To be quite frank, anytime anybody returns, I'm always a little surprised. <laughs> well, I was back told for more. Was, yeah, you did it again. <laughs> what? You were told there was what? Beer. Oh, yeah. There was, but. Yeah. There is beer, but you said yeah, no. I did. Oh, well, I have to work out, so I got to stay on the straight and narrow have to work out i mean i guess in theory in 32 minutes i should be at jujitsu but i'm not gonna be so here not we go. gonna do it today well no i'm not it's really super hot i'll go tomorrow it is really hot yeah is it supposed to be cooler tomorrow it's still like this no this. but i usually go like monday wednesday oh, friday later in the day yeah, yeah and it's 7 30 7 30 5 30 yeah is usually when i go nice yeah and so it is i would like to tell you it's cooler in there but it's not because all the doors are closed so yeah Where are you gonna go are you going to a gym a gymnasium no I'll probably uh ride the peloton oh. i was gonna ride home from here because it's not that far how are you gonna get here but i was gonna have to have catherine bring me and that I was see. a giant inconvenience for to whom the, oh I see. yeah to her yeah. right yeah not to me i could have brought you yeah. or I, you could have ridden here and then, and I then got a ride home I, I didn't realize you had a cx9 yeah i'll well, see yeah yeah you guys didn't plan this very well. No. Zero planning involved. Well, just, just for just, everybody, so that you understand, they live close to each other. This isn't like a weird... Yeah, I think about about a mile and a half. Yeah. Something like that. But it was one of those things where I was like, oh, do you want to do lunch after this? And Nick was like, no, I got places to be. And I was like, all right. So then I figured I'm going to want to get lunch. And so <laughs> that's why I drove separately. I like makes lunch. Sense. Lunch's fine. Yeah, I mean, it there's sense. birria down the street. And I did have a breakfast burrito. I was telling you earlier. I had a breakfast yeah, burrito at like 10.30. Ago by now. It was at ten thirty. That's two hours ago. I don't normally eat breakfast. Okay. So I'm, I'm foolish, yeah, but set. but beer is pretty good. So yeah. you can take one one taco. One. Do they sell them by the one? Yeah, you can buy. Yeah, a you can taco. buy a la carte. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. And they look at okay. you like, <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> yeah, but then you would just tell them you had a breakfast burrito, and they'd rub your little burrito. Oh, baby. they need to make beer breakfast burritos. Oh, could you imagine? I don't know. That'd but, be good with some scrambled eggs in there. Yes. Yeah, that would be good. Yes. But I think they would have to like squish out some of the juice yeah. like you don't want runny no yeah no yeah. That, that does make sense yeah that'd be good yeah mm-hmm. so the reason why we're off this weird schedule is because last week i wasn't here i was out in tehachapi california of all places uh yeah i was here. which is not really a destination by any means uh not for most people no nope. no but apparently unless you want a christmas tree do they sell trees? I think they have that Christmas tree farm out in Tehachapi. I don't yep. know. From my understanding, this is the third time I've been up there. So Grayson's been doing... Uh, uh, you, the third time and you don't know anything about it? Well, so yes and no. So, I mean, I've been up there enough times. The ah. first the first year, um, we stayed in a suburb uh, called Stallion Springs, which is about like 15 minutes away. And that's right next to where Woodward West is. And so Grayson was skateboarding uh, for a, a week-long summer camp. So we dropped him off. And then we didn't see him again. We dropped him off Sunday and didn't see him until the following Saturday. Last year, we did the same thing, but we dropped him off and then drove away and went to Santa Barbara and Arroyo Grande. So Which is the, a much better choice. Yes. Uh, did the California coast. Yeah. But because Jeanette burned through all her vacation Did time, you see the sea lions? Along the coast? We didn't go that far north. Oh, you didn't go? Okay. That's um, more towards Big Sur. Yeah. And so th- this year, because Jeanette burned through all her vacation time, she had to consider this a, a working vacation and had to work. Uh, from the uh, from the rental. Yeah, but at least she can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was nice. But so we just stayed in Tehachapi, and it's famous for meth. A train loop. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's it. So I was kind of bored. There wasn't much yeah. shit to do. So I, I ended up driving quite a bit to other spots. Cooked meth. But in my time looking up uh, interesting things about Tehachapi, because it's you have to search. Yeah. Uh, the the city's largest employer is the California Correctional Institute. There's a prison. There. <laughs> so I'm not that far <laughs> off. Later, You're not yeah, that far okay. off. So there you go. <laughs> the, the, the prison employs like something about like 1,400 people. Employees. Employees. Okay. And 
the according to the census data, they said the the population. The last time they checked, I guess, was like 2012 uh-huh. to 2022. The population dipped, and they said they don't think it's actually a dip in population, but. I guess they include the prisoner so population. Less, people, less prisoners. There was less people in prison, and that's why the the, the city of Tehachapi's overall population declined. It was like thirteen thousand people. That's so weird. Mm, that I'm weird. surprised that they they count prisoners as part of the population. Because, well, I mean, their bodies and they're humans. It's yes, not like they're. But, but from like a they don't a, pay into taxes, right? A tax generating revenue or like you know home ownership. Like it throws all Wait those numbers off. Yeah. Are you sure they don't pay taxes? Because they have jobs. Even if they get paid a minimal amount of money, I'm sure they're taxed on it. This is the government. They're not going to let you have a free ride. I think it's a private Mm -hmm. prison. I think CCI is a privately run prison, which is they're getting paid. Privatized prisons is is a weird concept anyway. such a weird concept. Because they get paid something like 100 bucks per day per prisoner to house them. And so, like, apparently the the private prison industry is one of the biggest lobbyists against any sort of, like... um, crime reform right because they don't want to lose yeah the revenue they. stream yeah yeah so it's it's a really odd situation so anyways so to hatch me prisons and trains that's really kind of what i guess it, it's big on meth adjacent meth adjacent yes yeah. and so the house we rented was a lovely lovely little bungalow like real charming big huge yard for pepper to go run around and play in and stuff airbnb is that where you found it yeah yeah no. and so the only downside is is i guess pool homes aren't a thing like nobody has a swimming pool in Tehachapi, dude. You would think everybody would have a swimming pool in Tehachapi. It's hot. It's hot, but it's yeah. at, it's at elevation. It's at four thousand feet. It's still hot. It's still hot. So like while we were there, the the daytime highs were in like the the mid to upper eighties. Did you buy a splash pad? I bought a inflatable pool. Oh, okay. That we saw our neighbors use on the Fourth of July. And okay. It was a, a huge like eight foot diameter. Inflatable Is it a people pool. pool or was it a dog pool no, that you just happened to put people in? It's a people okay. pool. It had an inflatable bench. Oh, and cool. A backrest so you can actually yeah, yeah. sit in it. So. The smart thing my neighbor did that I never thought of is they bought the cheap interlocking foam tile oh, yeah, yeah, floors yeah, right. and put that underneath the pool oh, so you're not bad, standing dude. right on concrete or something like that. And I was like, okay, that's genius. Yep. So I bought the pool. Uh-huh. I bought the, the foam tiles. I got an electric pump. I'm all you set. Got it all out. An electric pump? Yeah. yeah. To inflate the pool. Oh. Because it's a big ass pool. Or it's a hot tub. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or it's a hot foot. Or an electric, electrocution has A cold jacuzzi. Yeah. So... And you really invested in this vacation. Yeah. 50 bucks on the pool, like 20 bucks on the foam tile, 12 bucks on the pump. I mean, that's almost 100 bucks. Yeah. So yeah. get it all set up, blow it all up. And then like, so Sunday afternoon, Jeanette and I are hanging out in the pool. It's lovely. Uh, we, we go in for the rest of the day. We come out the next morning and the inflatable bench portion of the, the pool it's popped. is popped. And we're like, what the hell? Coyote. No, raccoons. <laughs> Oh God! There was like they had a how did party. you figure it out? There was dirty paw prints on the outside of the, oh, the tub funny. as he scrambled to get out because it's it's white along the upper trim. Okay, and you can see the paw marks. So they got in it to hang out and freaked, or they didn't know what was in it. They oh, jumped sure. in and then it's water out, yeah, slashed yeah. it to get out. That's funny. And then the foam, the interlocking tiles, the edge has like a there's an edging that goes on that gives you a nice smooth sure. outside edge. Sure. They had shredded that and tore it up and threw it all over the uh, the grass. Jeez. So, so was, did you actually get to use the pool? Other than that first time on Sunday yeah, afternoon, no. no. That's funny. Oh, man. <laughs> Do we? We have a. This one's a dog pool, but it's a one of those collapsible right yeah, pools, yeah. and it's they're actually pretty good size. I think it's like six feet, something like that. Pretty good size. We put that thing out in the backyard, fill it up. Neither dog will use it. Yeah. Sounds like okay. How about we we'll get it? Water. No. Maple will go in, she'll get her ball, but she, like, jumps right back out. Yeah, Ripley, obviously. like, he's pissed when you put him in there. He's like, I don't want to be in here. Thank you very much. Uh, which is weird because you would think he would like water. So I was like, okay, we'll get a splash pad. We got a splash pad thing that's got, you know, things the, the that shoot up and, and whatever. Stuff, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Maple doesn't like when it's turned up too high, so she won't even get her ball out of it. She's like, no, nah, I don't want to go through that. Ripley, it's a drinking fountain. <laughs> Have you seen the, the, the little pad where... Wasted they, 30 bucks. <laughs> if they stand on it, it shoots like a, a blast of water up in the air, and so it's only shooting water when the when dog's on paws it? are on it. Oh, yeah. interesting. And it looks like a little spring, kind yeah, of yeah. like a little springboard. And I, no. I was watching a, a clip on it yesterday. The dog was going nuts for it, but they were basically drinking the water. They would yeah, yeah. jump on it, and it'd shoot like a... A stream of water that it would collect, and they would try to catch it with their mouth when it was falling back down. He like like he'll if you have a hose, he wants to drink out of the hose. 
Yeah. And like ever since he's he was a little puppy, I'd showed him like don't be afraid of the sprinklers. So he drinks out of sprinklers and stuff when we're on walks and okay. like at the park. Yeah. But yeah, he just is. Oh, it's a drinking fountain. That's it. Wouldn't even walk through it. So speaking of dogs in the pool, so when we were sitting in it on Saturday afternoon, Pepper was walking around. Did you she, put her in? No. Oh. But we she put her front paws in and look and see us inside. Yeah, yeah. And then she jumped in, not knowing that it was filled with water. Oh no. And the look on her face, like in slow motion, as she makes contact with the water before she's fully <laughs> in. How deep is it? It was like probably, how much water did you have in it? A foot? No, it was more like two feet. Oh, I mean that's. Yeah, that's not deep. insignificant. Yeah, so yeah. Like, when I sat on the bottom of the pool, it was up to like chest. Ooh. And so um, huh. her eyes just dilated huge. And then yeah. she just went straight for the edge and it just jumped right out. That's funny. But it was uh, that was kind of worth the price of admission, even though that was the only interaction she had with the pool that weekend. Too bad you didn't have it on video. You could have submitted it to the internet. I could have and yeah. won nothing. But I don't know. I could have made some money off viralhog.com sure. or whatever it is. The. Uh, <laughs> But the, the, the big bummer is that there's no um, there's no camera footage of the raccoons because I want to know if there was more than yeah. one. Was it a pool party? Because there was paw prints all around like the perimeter of the That's of the so pool. Funny. So I don't know if it was. I think raccoons to- typically come in pack. Like there's not typically solo, right? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. But when we were in the backyard, so the backyard had a really cool deck that was attached to the back of the house to the master bedroom, uh-huh. and so in the evenings. Great breeze, real chill, real cool out there. And we were out there, I don't know, about 9 o'clock at night, Jeanette and I. And then uh, she hears a, a, a rustle behind her, turns around, and there's a fat raccoon, like, walking along the, the side fence on the gravel, just frozen, staring at us, like, didn't realize we were out there. Yeah. And I was trying to get a picture of it, so I stood up, and as soon as I stood up, it, it ran it away. bolted. But it was by itself. Hmm. A but, group of raccoons, by the way, is called a brace. A brace? Yep. That's not cool. Or a gaze, also known as a committee. The committee I'm down with. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I like that. I looked that up just for you. Yeah. We did see murders of crows. Did you? Yeah. Multiple crow groups, so multiple murders. <laughs> multiple murders. Yeah. We have had hawks in the backyard. Yeah. Red hawks? Uh, yeah. Red tail hawks. Two, two of them. Yep. yep. Pretty Brad. Yeah. One of them, he goes, I don't know, he, she, whatever. I'm not trying to pronoun this bird. I have no clue. The bird goes up on the pole over here, and uh, it was out there on the, you know, the whatever, not the telephone pole, the power pole. Yes. It was up there eating. The utility pole. Eating another bird. Oh, rad. Yeah, it was rad because, like, feathers were flying down, and it was like, it was, and it's right there. So you can see it, like, pulling the big old strings of meat. Oh, it's cool. So, Tehachapi apparently doesn't do much to control the pet population because there was cats everywhere. This is our first time staying downtown Tehachapi. Like, we were... There's a downtown? It's not just all... It's not like Barstow. It's, there's actually, like, a main drag, and there, there's there's a... Do they have a five and dime? No. But that would have been cool. They had, like, uh, you know, the just some interesting stuff, but nothing, like... The, the downtown area is quaint. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but there's a... Cats everywhere. Like we were walking around and uh, that's weird. <laughs> there was a a pretty ripe dead cat carcass, oh. like on the on the on the dead grass along the sidewalk on our walk one evening. That's uh, hot. On Sunday evening, Grayson or Saturday evening, Grayson saw it and he just named it Oh Buttercup. Like he named the cat. Oh, and so then the next morning, Jeanette and I and the dog go for our walk. We walk past Still that there? same spot. No, Buttercup disappeared mm. and so uh with grayson's camp you can send him bunk notes uh-huh. and so you, you write them up on in the app and they, they print them out oh, and deliver them to them so we told him that uh buttercup disappeared he either went to heaven he was absconded by aliens but he most likely definitely is not in the bottom of a dumpster somewhere nearby probably no, got never. coyoted maybe but it'd been there for a while because the weird thing is, is you could see the outline of where the the carcass was on the oh, dead gross. grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what the hell? Tehachapi is the like I've been through Tehachapi. Yeah, it's it's. But a, I've never like I'm gonna stop in Tehachapi. Like the nearest major city is Bakersfield. Yeah. Or Lancaster. You yeah. know, so it's not exactly the, the destination of California. Exactly. Nope. Yeah, there's never gonna be a real housewives of Tehachapi. Wow, well, well, there should be. <laughs> <laughs> or some reality show based on that. But yeah, so that was interesting. So because it was such a, a quaint and very clearly boring location, I just started looking for stuff to do and drive to. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I've never been to Lake Isabella. 
I'll go there. That was underwhelming. It's, yeah, it's fine. There's some good roads out there, though. Yes, the roads were great, and I ended up driving up to the southernmost part of the Sequoia National Forest to the, the Trail of 100 Giants. Yeah. Yep. And so it's literally just like 100 sequoia trees in a little grove. For but, some reason, 155 is closed. But the roads, I, I, I took uh, M50 yep. and M60. And so these are roads that are seasonal. They're closed during the winter because yeah. of snow. Um, but this time of year, they were open. So they're, they're, they're rough. Like, I wouldn't go down those roads with something super slammed just because the asphalt's all pockmarked and yep. beat up from the snow and, and ice. Yep. But uh, in the car that I was in, they were they were fun, and nobody's on them. So I was hauling up there. So that that was a fun drive, but that was two and a half hours, like, yeah. from where I was staying all the way up to the uh, the forest of 100 uh, giants. The only reason I've ever been out there is either in a, for the roads, like in a car yeah. or a motorcycle. That's the only reason I've ever been through to Hatchapi. Yeah. But going out like Isabel, and then there's, um, I can't remember whatever I just said, 158 or whatever that goes up over the mountains. There's some rad roads out yeah, there. Yeah, there are some decent roads. So, so I, I did those, and then uh, on Wednesday I was bored, and Tuesday night I happened to see that they had painted the Cabazon T-Rex, the Cabazon dinosaurs, um, the ones that, that Pee-wee. Yeah, or, in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Yes, stopped there. visited, exactly. And so they had painted the T-Rex to honor Paul Rubens. Yeah. Are they, they going to leave it like that? Probably for the next week or two or a couple of weeks or uh, whatever. I think they should just leave it. It's they paint cool. it pretty regularly, which is kind of fun. That's a, that's a yeah. thing they've started doing in the last couple of years. Yeah. Because historically, they've always just been dinosaur. When when I've gone as a kid, I remember they always look kind of run down. Like yes. they were all peeling. and Yes. Yeah. I've never been in them. Uh, if there's the gift shop inside the Brontosaurus. I mean, I've been, yeah, I've been in a gift shop. I should say I've never been to the T-Rex mouth. I don't know if you can. You used to be able to. But there's like a fenced off area. and Behind it, you can go through it. Hmm. What I didn't realize, though, is that whole uh, Cabazon dinosaur, Yeah, it's a creationist museum. Uh, what now? So basically, God made the dinosaurs. Like, there's no evidence. No, I understand the words that you're saying. Yes. it's a. But you're saying that that's a museum for the Jesus. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. And it, I don't know if it's it always, always been that. that I was going to no. say. I, not, not when Paul Rubens was there filming for I Peewee's remember Big Adventure. rocks. Yeah. They had rocks like... Uh, in the gift shop. Yeah. I don't remember much about other than just like seeing them from and, the outside. And the gift shop is pretty normal from, you know, my time in there. Like I haven't been there. I think I was last in there maybe a year or two ago. It's like junk. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. It's just tchotchkes Like and here's crap. fool's gold and like yeah. that box. Yeah. You know, remember those like box of minerals and you mm-hmm. can pick yeah. like the, yeah. And the plastic dinosaurs. Yeah. And stuff and like that. dream catchers. But yeah, that's a, a yeah. Crea- uh, creationist museum. But anyways. How so does I, that work? I saw that they painted it Tuesday night for Pee Wee. So Wednesday, I'm like, I ain't got shit to do. So I drove two and a half hours from Tehachapi all the way out to Cabazon. Did you go to Hadley's and get a date shake? Not this drive, but I've, I did that uh, when I went to take Grayson to see the Cheez-It oh, store. Oh, yeah, yeah, We yeah, stopped yeah, by Hadley's. Yeah. Have you seen, like, well, obviously you've been there, but I hadn't realized that Hadley's used to be a shack. Have you ever been there? Yeah, it mm-hmm. used to be, like, right by the freeway. Hadley's was right by the freeway, a little, like, shack, and they're famous for their date shakes. It now, is a massive freaking facility now. It's not like a... a Trader Joe's Sprouts kind of vibe. It's like a grocery store. Okay. And then the food court's on the left where you get the date shakes. It's not like that weird, what's that stupid gas station, the ice cream cone place? Eddie World. Yeah, Eddie World. Not like that. Eddie World's huge. Eddie World sucks. It's fine. No. Any reason there's no S on the end? Just doesn't seem yeah, like it's kind of weird. Correct. You want it to be Eddie's. Meanwhile, world. there's it's, a Johnny's Jr. World. down the street. That that has the S. We could just Johnny's. Ch- yeah, Johnny's Jr. is what it's called. <laughs> I don't like Eddie World uh, because half the stuff in there is like their own brand. Yep. Right. Yeah. So like their own beef jerky. Their jerky's not good. Nope. Like half the stuff's their own stuff. I just want what I want. Well, they have name brand stuff. I just go in for the cooler and grab. No, like they a... don't have like all. If you want beef jerky, they don't have anything but oh, their own. Right. I got you, so I if got there's you. certain thing like road trip snacks, it's just their shit. And their shit. What's, so, your, what's your go-to road to road to? What's your go-to road trip snack? Uh, peppered, kippered beef. I do like a peppered beef jerky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. that's about or some sometimes chicharron, the I'll spicy do, kind. Yeah, usually yeah. for me it's it's peppered beef jerky, it's peanut M and M's, and then like a soda, like a diet soda mm. or something or other. Like those are the kind of the three staples. A rock star. Okay. No. What now? What's, okay. your, <laughs> what's your road trip? Beef Culinary, jerky, just, uh, either teriyaki original oh, or okay. sweet and spicy. Okay, uh-huh. all right. And then uh, good old sunflower seeds. Really? And water. 
But yeah, do some you get the shelled ones, ones, or do you actually spit the the shells out into a little cup or something? No, I spit the shells out into a cup. Oh, you wow. uh, do you got? Do you just go regular sunflower seeds? Because yep. I've been on the barbecue kick recently, so I can't get behind the flavored sunflower seeds. Dude, they're good. The barbecue ones are good. I saw a guy at my nephew's game, um, his last game before they lost the All Star, the last championship or last yep. tournament. Um, the dude had like bacon, bacon sunflower seeds, they're, and they said they're really good. So. I'm down with the flavored sunflower seeds. And the but sickness. I, but I prefer the shelled ones when they're flavored. So when they're oh, already... Oh, see, no. I like the like the barbecue ones. Half of what I like about them is like... The flavor on the shell. Yeah, you just pop a big old handful in your mouth, and then you got this delicious barbecue flavor. Uh, I'm not skilled enough to pop a bunch of shell or t- the shells in my mouth. Oh, and then separate. Oh. I do them one at a time. Right? Oh, no. You got to oh, pack, no. that, you you gotta, pack yeah. that cheek. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Let the salt just drain oh, yeah. into your gums. That's and then, the like, later it. on, it feels like your mouth's about to fall off. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are all true statements. Yeah. I like I'm bad. So a baseball game, like I'll, I'll eat an entire bag of peanuts. Oh yeah, oh, peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. Peanuts are all. But I also pop the the peanut in my mouth and like soften it a little bit and then break it because I like this. I'm the a salt salty. over oh, sweet person. All right. But sunflower seeds, like I I will finish an entire bag of sunflower seeds at a baseball game. Easy peasy. Oh yeah. Yep. Interesting. It's fantastic. But I've I, never uh, I've never thought to do sunflower seeds in the car. Like to me, that just seems like too much of a mess. Well, no, you just, you just have the cup. cup. Well, I understand cup. that, but it's still like, you know, you just miss- don't spill them. <laughs> no, yes. don't spill them. Dude, I actually, uh, yesterday, was working on the Forerunner and went to do something in the back, and I was like, why are there rocks all over the back seat of this car? Like, what? Like little pebbles, right? No, it, the treat bag, when one of us had oh. taken the, do- the dogs to the park, and I guess a bunch of treats fell out of one of the treat bags. So there were just like 45 little tiny bite sized oh. treats all over. But it was pretty funny. At first, I thought it was like literally rocks. Oh. <laughs> Circling back on the uh, shelled nuts, have you guys had the salt and pepper pistachios from Trader Joe's? Yes. Yes, those are good. So good. Uh, there's. I just got these ones at Costco that are chili, chili lime. They're um, cashews. Target has a whole bunch of flavored cashews, and they have like a, a honey chili yeah, uh, yeah. cashews, and they have a bunch of different flavors. They're pretty good, but it, the downside is it's like a... A little larger than like a sandwich baggie, and it's like eight bucks. Oh, yeah, geez. the gro- the regular grocery store should have um, their pistachios. They're they come in a red bag and they're shelled pistachios, but they're chili uh, lot or no chili. Okay, like dude, uh, they're like crack. And the problem is, is you eat a, like a little handful of them, and then two minutes later, the bag's gone. Like it's it's that bad. But so they're the same deal. They're like nine bucks at the grocery store. I'm they have of, a bigger bag at Costco that's almost the same price. I was gonna say I'm kind of tempted to think because yeah. every time you I go got a like, Costco membership. In case you can't tell, no, wouldn't have <laughs> guessed. I I don't. It's a very grown up thing. For I me. never. I know. would never have had one except for the company I was working for had a rewards deal, mm. and I had X number of points to spend, and it was either get a new shredder. Or a Costco membership. Okay, that's so I got a Costco membership for the meat mostly, and I've already taken advantage of it. Um, got how many hot dogs have you purchased? You know, zero. Really? Yeah, because the lines are always too freaking long. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. not waiting in that line. Yeah. Which Costco um, do you go to here? Tustin, the one at Marketplace. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the line's just way too long. I like but how everybody has like a favorite Costco. It's like, the one I've gone to for years because well, my mom's always had a membership and everything. So that's where that, we would go. But then also we've noticed, unfortunately, there are some demographics at certain Costco's that sure. make them more of a hassle to shop at than others. And the problem, well, some of them have different things. Like true. the one at the district is bigger. Yes. And they have more stuff, but it's also at the district. The problem that I have is I, I think there's a there's a correlation between bad drivers and bad shopping cart operators. Oh, yeah. And so if uh, you don't like watching people struggle parking in the parking lot, don't, don't go, go to inside. that Costco yeah. because they're the ones that are going to be ramming you in the ankle with yeah. their carts because they don't know how big it is. Well, it's a funny story. I had to pick between, I was saying, the shredder. And a Costco membership, pick the Costco membership because it was more practical. We, right. You know, it's like, we do need a new shredder, but whatever. Uh, I think it was like 24 hours later, the shredder caught on fire. Oh, God. And you went to Costco and bought a five pack of shredders? No, I haven't bought a shredder oh. yet. But, but like literally 24 hours later, it, I was sitting in here and I was like, what is that smell? And I looked over and there's smoke coming up from the shredder. Running? No, it wasn't even on. Weird. It was plugged in, but yeah. it wasn't on. And it had been making some struggle noises for a little bit. But I looked over, so I went over. I thought, oh, shit, the, the hopper's on fire, yeah. right? The, the bin. And I pull the, there's a bin there. Uh, I pull the bin, or I pull the, the machine the part off. Yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Pull it off and flip it over, and a little flame goes. Pfft. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So I t- walked outside looking very confused. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, do I, what am I supposed to do with this thing, right? I don't yeah. want to set it in the lawn, and then the dog goes and like lights its snoot on fire. 
So I just wait. I stand there holding this firing <laughs> shredder until it went out, and then it finally went out. I was like, "Okay," and I just set it down and walked away. Did and you then, just douse it with water? No, I was like, "It's in the middle of the bricks." Oh, it's, yeah, yeah I whatever. I mean, it was just because it's not like you're gonna dump it right into the trash right away. You no, know, I, I had to wait a couple days, and then I actually took it to being responsible. I took it to the Staples for recycling. Oh, the e waste. Oh. Yeah. That but it's nice dumb. Here. You can't just take it. They make you like fill out paperwork. Ugh. What? Yeah, they ask you questions like, "Who are you? What's your name?" Because there's a black market. Because not I paying you for it. No, yeah. you do get a credit if you have the app, like the Staples app. You get five dollars in credit or something like that. Hmm. I need to recycle a lithium battery. No, I just am not getting around to doing it. The we got ta- a bag of batteries. The, the city we live in does like a. Uh, recycling event like once or twice a year they do like an e-waste thing. oh really yeah. they do yes yeah at central park or yeah yeah you yeah. just drive through and you just pop your trunk and they'll grab everything so i just leave it in like cardboard boxes so i have a, a box of batteries or you could this is not very nice but you could take like for example a box that you don't use that's uh-huh. for a previous product maybe you yes. bought something and you don't need the box put all your shit in that and then take it to the goodwill <laughs> <laughs> that is not recommended. The, uh, I'm saying Goodwill you could. Is I didn't say it was nice. You. you know what? I wouldn't want the Goodwill to sponsor me because they're a for profit, and I don't take stuff there. The, the Lowe's by my house uh, used to have like a battery recycling bin, yeah. like near the checkout registers. And the last time I went there, they started getting particular about what kind of batteries they would accept, and huh? they they only would recycle the rechargeable batteries. Because I think the battery is the the lithium ion. That's yeah. More money okay. than an alkaline battery, so therefore they're getting choosy with with batteries mm. they will take. For oh, disposal. weird. Well, do like, they pay for that? No, it's just you drop them off. In no, a I'm bed. saying like, do they? They pay are they paying it. somebody to recycle it? I don't know, but I mean, if it's lithium ion, it most be. likely that stuff they're they would be getting paid. I would think because there's only a finite amount of yeah, lithium. Yeah. So huh. I don't know what it is, but I noticed that because I was like, well, I don't know what kind of batteries these are, so I'm dumping them in anyways. But most likely they weren't all lithium ion because most of my batteries, if they're rechargeable, are still good. What are they going to do? Tell you no, sir? Well, no, it's it's unattended. Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's sort of on the a hole side of things. But it's like I'm trying to do the right thing by not putting batteries in the trash, and now you guys are saying you only take lithium ion batteries. It's like what the hell? We have a bag of batteries that are dead. Yeah. And I don't know where to take them. I don't either. Yeah, you got to wait for. It's like what well, you can't. It's hard to find a place to take used oil anymore. Most auto parts. Uh, Riley's. Yeah. Yeah. Auto parts places, but what what they'll do is they'll always tell you the tank is full. Yeah, they also they don't take coolant anymore. Really? Mm. Yep. I, I asked about that. Cool. No, we don't take that anymore. What? Mm-hmm. Interesting. And it was you brand take it new. To a dealer? No, I could have taken it to the Toyota store, but that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure they would. Take it. Yeah, but most likely they would have charged you like a tire or like a tire disposal Probably. fee. You know, they would charge you some Eight sort of fee or whatever. Not me. Yeah. Not you. You just left it on the curb. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I know the service director. I'm pretty sure he would have taken oh, okay. a little bit of cool. He said, "Not me." me. I thought yeah, I literally meant not me. Yeah, yeah. I've got a special way of doing things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I th- see. What you do is, as you drive by, you just dr- you wing it at the guy, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And yell, "Heads up!" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like, the important part is you got to yell, "Heads up!" Because if yes. you don't, that's assault. So that's true. There yeah. You go. yeah. So last time we were on, we were talking about the pains, the pains in the asses of of selling shit online. And oh, so yeah. I had tried to get rid of Grayson's bed on um, Facebook Marketplace and on But and you finally sold it. So, yeah, Craigslist, I got zero inquiries. Which I was, don't think Craigslist is, like, a thing anymore. Which was kind of surprising because historically I've always done well getting rid of stuff on Craigslist. So this time around, after, like, two weeks of, like, no contact, no inquiries, yeah. I had to lower my standards and go the Facebook Marketplace route. <sighs> And so I set the price high, knowing that you know it was going to haggle. So I was willing to go for two fifty for friends. So I priced it for I think four fifty. No, I went like three fifty. Okay. Then I dropped it down to three, two fifty, and then is it still available? Would you take twenty five dollars? No. Can you deliver it? No. The first guy that reached out to me was interested in it, and then he goes like, "Oh, I'm in Nevada." I'm like, "Yeah, Uh, I don't know why you're saying. Yeah, I don't know how Facebook figures out that you know you might be interested in something." But anyways. The other guy uh, that responded like a couple days later after I dropped it down to 200 bucks, he was in uh, San Marcos, which is still a good hour, hour and a half south. Yeah, that's not where it was close. at. But sure. you know, if somebody's willing to drive an hour, hour and a half to come see it, they're buying the damn thing. Dude, the guy sold the stock wheels and tires for the Forerunner 2, came from like 
two hours away. Right. But you know they're not really going to waste your time because yeah. they've got time. And he paid full price. Yeah, same thing with this guy. Yeah, yeah. So 200 bucks, done deal. I helped him. I'm like, you, you're going to need something large to carry this all in. Right. Um, and so he had a, a Yukon and everything fit. Huh. So Perfect. luckily it was just him in the truck so he could fold all the seats down. Sure. Move it in, but he didn't bring his whole family? No, he had a, uh, a six-year-old son and he just his wife had just given birth to their second son. And so this bed was to be a big brother bed for the six-year-old. And so it was kind of a reward for him to put up with the inconvenience of having a, a crying baby, I guess. Having to split time with a sibling. Yeah. But the dude was real cool. I mean, yeah. I've just chilling with a guy. Like He seems like the type of guy like you would actually want to hang out with outside of this weird interaction. Sounds like, he like seemed you guys went to dinner or something? No, get a beer? no. No, but we were just chit-chatting, you know, uh, as we were loading up the car and all okay. that stuff. So, I mean, it was probably a... 20 minute 30 minute interaction overall between sure. the time he showed up and drove off yeah, yeah but got rid of it nice but now i'm on to selling something else and this i have to use a different platform so i bought tickets for grace and i to see snoop dogg warren g too short at the five points amphitheater in irvine california okay that concert is at the end of august it's the final stop on uh, snoop dogg's high school reunion tour right i am going to be in Japan. So I can't make the concert anymore. So Ticketmaster lets you, I bought them from Ticketmaster, lets you list the tickets for sale in their app. Now the the challenge or the unique part about my tickets is I don't have two tickets side by side. I have two aisle seats, one right in front of the other. So I have like the oh, aisle yeah, okay, on sure, row 19 sure. and the aisle on row 20. Yeah, it shouldn't be that big um, of a deal. Right. But Ticketmaster won't let you sell them together. You have to sell each ticket well, yeah, because they're technically individuals. Right. Sure. But on StubHub, I can sell them together. Okay. And so... The what, do, what do Snoop Dogg tickets go for these days? So I my my face value on the ticket was fifty nine twenty, With fees and... That 20 cents is important. Yeah. But Weird. with fees and all the other extra bullshit, it's like 76 bucks and change. Sure. In order for me to get my 76 bucks and change back, I have to list the tickets at... $89. Right. So that you get the net back. So yeah, I get yeah, the net right. back. Yeah. But of course, if I charge $89, that person who's buying them is paying 100, 105, 100. 100 yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, it's kind of bullshit that on a resale. It's also bullshit they get double fees, essentially. That's exactly yeah. what I'm pointing out. Yeah, yeah. It's the fact that Ticketmaster's already charged fees on the transaction. Well, it's just like when you go to register a car in California that uh, that's already been sold, right? You're collecting oh, the taxes, taxes again. Yeah. You're yeah. taxing tax. Yeah. But so, so the challenge now is really? oh yeah couldn't this, tell yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like I've never had to sell tickets before and so it's oh really I've never used like because I've always been able to attend yeah, yeah, the yeah, events sure. and so it's weird but I've had them listed for a couple of weeks I dropped the price because at first I was like all right maybe I'll make like ten bucks on yeah it. no you so won't. now I, I dropped the price yesterday to my break even point yeah. And so now I just sit and wait, I guess. Yeah. Just hoping. Yeah. Yeah. What date is it? It's a Sunday that I think the 26th. It's the last Sunday in August. Mm. Um, so I was looking forward to going. We're going to Beck next week. Oh, right. Yeah. At the fair. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to that part of it. But the, the fair? fair? There's so many people. Oh, man. But the people watching is oh, top notch. Parking sucks. And then the eh, massive the corn dog or the, the deep fried chocolate bacon whatever something or other no thank you some no, of those things are good no the, the chocolate covered bacon is good the zucchini weenie is a favorite the chocolate covered oh yeah yeah those are okay yeah i had the i got the i mean i haven't been to the fair in years but the last time i went they had the bacon wrapped pretzels Ooh. i mean uh, sorry pickles nickel okay yeah. bacon wrapped you pickles and they were one of the grossest things ever because they were like soggy oh, and there was crispy. so much juice and they were so salty that is disgusting. So Why would a, anybody do that? Well, yeah, I got, I got you a pickle. Pickle related, yeah. That is that's your parting gift as a pickle, well, just in a bag. Keep you can yeah. keep it. No, man, it's no, a it's yours. a stuffed pickle. Little known fact not. about Nick: his he full loves name pickles. is Nickel, not <laughs> not Nicholas. It's Nickel because his mom was a big pickle fan. That's Ooh. not true at all. <laughs> None of that is true. <laughs> it's Nickel. Uh, but on the food kick, I went to Din Tai Fung the other day. Have you ever been there? I yes, have not. But that's not nearly as fun as fair food. No, but it's good. It is good. It yeah. was really good. Was it busy? Oh, dude, the place is packed constantly. I had to get reservations like a month in advance. For just two? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. That was not too um, bad. Table no. two is probably easier. Oh, to pull. but this is funny. So we get there. And, and for those that don't know, Din Tai Fung is a so it's a, a Chinese dumpling, dumpling restaurant. It is, I believe, they're Taiwanese is where they're based. They're in like Taipei or something like that. Yeah. Um, they originated there. It's a Michelin starred place. Yes. And they have other locations throughout the world that maybe not Michelin starred, but the quality is exactly the same. Everything's made by hand. Like there's a whole window you watch and make all the dumplings. Yeah. And this is at South Coast Plaza, which yep. on its own is already a pain in the ass. Yes. Yes. And it's also a landmark destination for Asian tourists. At one point was the largest shopping mall in the world. Yes. Uh, and then they built the Minnesota. Mall of America. Yeah, yeah, Mall of America. And so the big thing with that mall that always trips me out is they will have tour buses. Oh, yeah, roll full, up. Yeah with, yeah, with Asian tourists. Because, well, because they have that whole wing that's all the super high end. Well, when the dollar is weak and the Asian currencies are strong, so be it they're, they're Chinese or Japanese or Korean, um, they'll come here and get all of those like Louis Vuitton yeah. and all those fancy brands for relatively cheap compared to what they could buy in their own country. They opened a bunch of new watch stores too. Like they, they added a Panerai store. They added, um, they're all Tourneau stores. Jaeger. I know they're, well, so they're there's a Tourneau. New. There's a Tourneau. Yeah. But, but then they have this, the individual like, shops now too. The, the Rolex store is yep. a, is a Tourneau. Right. And so you don't know it because it's branded as Rolex. Right. So you walk in, but yeah, I think the, um, Omega store is the same. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, if it, you need a fancy watch and you want dumplings, yeah, Right. Uh, but we get there and go to check in. She's like, oh, you're too early for your reservation. I can't check you in. I was like, How early okay. was too early? Like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay. I was like, okay, we'll go walk around. So we walked around and uh, come back. She's like, come back at the top of the hour, basically. Okay. I was like, okay, we come back at the top of the hour. She was, oh, no, I, it's like two minutes. You can't, I can't check you in. I said, okay, well, the other chick told me to come back. So yeah. she was, hang on, let me let me ask my coordinator. And then she said, oh, I, okay, I can check you in. And you know where it is, right? So it used to be... It's right at the end of the mall where there's an anchor store. The anchor store used to be a Sears. Right. Oh, right. So okay. it's just open into the mall. I mean, it's a pretty big restaurant and they have an outdoor patio and everything, which I didn't know. But so anyway, she's like, oh, okay, we'll check you in fine. And they give you like a, um, it's kind of like at a sushi place. You have like a paper that you write on, right? Mm -hmm. Of what you want. They give you that. And she goes, this cracked me up. She goes, would you please wait in our lobby? And both, both of us look around and go, what lobby yeah. she goes just right over there <laughs> the whole like open area where people are walking they call it their, their lobby. lobby what yeah it was bizarre it's a little self-centered it was so dumb and i was just like you mean the the mall the walkway she's yeah. like yeah over there the lobby is this place expensive it's not cheap it seems like an interesting it's not, i wouldn't expensive. say it's crazy expensive like it's okay for a 10 piece 10 dumplings. Dumpling. Yeah. It's 10, 10 dumplings. It's about 18, 20 bucks, something like that. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is the dumplings are like donut holes. They're like this big. So you can chow through them pretty easily. Yeah, yeah we ate a lot of food. So, yeah. On their own, it's not bad. But when you just eat because you're hungry, then it gets a little pricey. Right. And But, I mean, the service is really good. Everything is it's on point. It's a very good. Except for them asking you to wait. In the yeah, park. except for they're calling it a lobby. I was so like, what weird. are you talking about? Did you dress about? up? No, I wore what I was wearing to work. And then I walked, uh, we did walk to the Lego store and did a lap at the Lego store and left. Oh, there you go. Yeah, didn't buy anything. The what? Concord's not out, so. Yeah. So, speaking of Legos, when I was in Tehachapi, the, the, the biggest retailer, which also happens to be, like, I think the fifth largest employer, is a Walmart. Of and course. They had that space uh, set. And so, I didn't realize that Lego is reissuing vintage sets. The space, oh, the, um the original like the lego space not yes. nasa related. right yeah 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 and so it, it's got your benny the the yeah. astronaut mm -hmm. but the the thing is is the packaging looks vintage so it's got yeah. like the older ca uh, color palette layout i mean it's all modern printing so it's got but they're also updated sets yes they yeah. are they're like redos of the old sets, like a reissue okay. kind yeah. of thing okay. but it's it's nicely done and it's really cool it was like there was another set that was kind of, it was a universal brick set but same with that vintage aesthetic packaging they've also done um the medieval set the castle is a reissue too. i just wish the pricing was vintage as retro well. right yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. it was 140 bucks i think or 100 bucks for that space set probably there's a what did i see recently there's something coming out so there that concord is coming out which looks pretty rad and it's got like a tilting nose and everything right that's that super cool rad. Um, but, and I think that's reasonable. It's like 160 bucks, but it's pretty big or whatever yeah. it is. There was some set I saw recently that's $200 and it looks like it might as well be like a Duplo set. 
Really? It's one of the Star Wars sets. It's like it's really, really basic and it's expensive. Huh. I don't know. Their pricing's all over the board. Yeah. There, Especially with the stuff that's licensed. Yeah. 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 There there are some sets you're like, okay, that's pretty good price. And, yeah. like, and you're like, yeah, no, can't swing that. The Concord one. I think it looks really cool. The thing that blew me away that I Airbus? never realized. Yes. I had no idea. I had no idea that the Concorde was built by Airbus. I didn't know that either. Yeah. I knew I, it was a you know a French airplane. I've seen one. Yes. Yeah. And but I just never put two and two together. I mean, I knew it wasn't Boeing, but I never thought what the manufacturer was. I guess so, who else would a Citroen? <laughs> Renault. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It was just like, all right, that's that's interesting. Have oh, you ever uh, seen a Concorde, Nick? Uh, not in person, no. No, they're pretty cool. Yeah, I would they're imagine. They're very large. Yeah. Yeah. There used to be... Shit, where was the one? I saw one and you could go in it. You could walk through it. I think that might be the one in Washington. That's maybe. the Spruce Goose? Well, no, 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 no. There's, so that, is, that is in Washington. Oregon? But up near... Well, that's true, Oregon. Uh, up near um, Seattle, there's an Air and Space Museum. And I oh. think they have a Concorde. And you can like, there's part, you, you either can walk through it or used to be able to, or you can peek your head in and see what it looked like inside. We never went to so that one. Edwards Air Force Base has a pretty cool museum. But ever since 9-11, civilians can't go on base. And the, and the museum right. is within the base boundaries. Ah. So they've been working on, I guess, collecting funds to build a new museum that sits just outside the gates. Uh-huh. So there, I was like, oh, I can go check out Edwards. And I was like, no, I can't. But they moved some of the planes, and they're sitting outdoors in Palmdale, which is, again, out in the middle Boy, of the Boy, that's like graveyard. Yeah. Yep. And so I, I did drive by the Mojave Air and Spaceport, yep. which is also a airplane graveyard. Yeah. And they had a bunch of like old 747s, like uh, Cathay Pacific, uh-huh. and a bunch of different airlines that are either defunct or just older planes. So that was kind of cool, but you can't get me out. Yeah, that's but really you can't cool. get up close to them because no. you can't get on airport property. But well, from you just the can surrounding if you roads, fly to it. Yes, if you have a small craft, plane. they'll let you land there. And they do a, I guess they do some sort of like planes and and coffee kind of event, like a, a Saturday or Sunday morning like fly in event. Sure, once a month, and you can then walk out onto like the small uh, runway terminal area. Yeah, yeah. So they get you. A couple hundred feet closer to the planes, but you can't go any closer than that. There used to be a that airport graveyard on the way to, I guess, on the way to Phoenix that you used to be able to go to and you just buy stuff. Yeah, that, that's that, where that company that does all the crazy like um, tags, plane tags. No, 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 no. There's another. They I do. We like, both know that company. Like, yeah, yeah. I've seen it, but no, they do large pieces of furniture and things oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. they like will use part of a wing and make a desk or like yeah. you know stuff like that. They that's where they were getting all their stuff for a long time. Now I don't know if they're still around, but that stuff was really cool. So yeah. the, the Mojave Air and Spaceport is kind of wishful naming. I was gonna say, I, <laughs> it's because <laughs> what space stuff are they doing? It there? was Virgin Galactic. They oh, had, it was oh, yes, yeah. and Virgin that folded right but the interesting thing is when you look at the facility it it looks like it hasn't really been updated since like the 60s or 70s like it's just all old it probably hasn't all the buildings yeah it probably hasn't um if it's even that modern correct yeah and it's just a mismatch of buildings all around um the the perimeter of of the museum or of of, of the actual airport itself and so there's composites companies and just other like you know, aerospace adjacent kind of industry. So I got to, I drove around the premises just kind of looking to see if there's any good vantage points to see the planes, but there's all sorts of like no photography sites yeah, yeah. and stuff. And I was like, ah, so I just drove through it, but it's a weird vintage, like industrial park. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Totally kind of cool. But yeah. it was, it was one of those things where I just drove by cause it was on my way to Cabazon. Yeah, yeah. So I just kind of took the detour and, and drove around for eight minutes before getting back on the highway. I was like, I was in uh I have no idea what part. Of, I was in Canada somewhere and dry. They went to get lunch and then went to, I must have been out by Saskatchewan or something like that. Anyways, and uh, come around a corner and there was like an airplane on a stick, like a jet, you know, right. like mul- mounted on this pillar. Um, but I was like, it was weird. I was like, why is this here? And then it turns out at some point, this random town in Canada was making jets hmm, or at least large p- components to contribute to it. But it's bizarre. It was like a monument to look at what we used to do. Now we have shitty tacos. I was out in Germany yeah. for a a car audio competition, like back in like the early two thousands. I think it was in like was Sunshine. it sponsored by Kraftwerk? No, but like right across the street, there was an aerospace air and space museum, and they had a jet oh, cool. on a big stick. And yeah, I was yeah. like, What the hell's that? And then I realized it was a museum. 
Did you go inside? Of course. What are they? What's the museum in German? I don't know. I don't know either. It's probably museum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably really practical. I've been practical. to museums in German and I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys brought uh, Lego up. So yes, I've sir. been reading uh, to Camden at night and we're reading a book called Who is Lego? And so it talks about the history oh, that's of cool. Lego's company. It's is it like neat. a visual picture book or it's a, a book book? It's a book book. Oh, there cool. are a couple of little like yeah, sure. artist yeah. renditions, if you will. That's but, awesome. Uh, yeah, it's pretty neat. Those who is or who uh, are books. Who are, yeah. I've never heard of them. Yeah, because they, they'll like, who is Elon Musk or, you know, who <laughs> is... Nikola Tesla, like they have books, oh, cool. and they're 100 pages maybe, 90, yeah, 80 yeah. pages, oh, something yeah. like that, and uh, you know, they're written at a pretty easy... Did you get it from the library? Um, do you go to the library? We do. Oh, that right. one is not from the library. Or like you own a book. We own yeah, multiple, that's multiple books. Yeah. Wow. I don't think Grayson has ever checked out a book from the public library. Really? Yeah, he's, he's checked them out from the school library and stuff, and we've gone to the public library, but it just ends up being... We end up buying the book because either one, we don't want to deal with the renewal process if he doesn't finish the book in time. But two, it's also just a way that he can just read the book and if he likes, he can keep it. So it's just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. And and the books are relatively inexpensive. So like those Who Am I books were just a couple of bucks. I donated a lot of books to the library recently. That's, yeah. yeah that's my the renewal thing. process is, I think, Can't you do it online now? now. Yeah. Oh, really? You just it's take the them? easiest thing in the world. Like, I think yeah. a lot of them have now gotten rid of late fees and stuff. Yeah. So it's just yeah. like... Indefinite, which then makes they it... They finally kind of, learned the lesson from Blockbuster? Right. Maybe. But it's I think weird it's that you would even have a late fee at a library. Like, what? No. Because well, they want people to bring the book back because there's only one copy of it and yeah. some other guy's waiting on it. You kind of mm-hmm. want the book back there. Well, yeah, we take wait. Camden to the library quite often. Do you but do events? We don't do events. Ah. No. The library here did the pizza contest this last summer. With the Pizza Hut? Like, read a couple of I don't books? know if it was Pizza Hut, but it was a deal, you know, read enough, like, read whatever through yeah. this list of stuff that's mm-hmm. age-appropriate, and you get a pizza. Yeah, I did that in elementary school. I got a yeah. bunch of Pizza Hut personal yeah. and pizza Those certificates. Oh, yeah. Absolutely love that. You felt like a, you had accomplished something. Yeah. When you came home on a Friday with a free pizza. Yeah. And then and you, it was like, I'm taking the family out for dinner, even though your your free pizza was like four bucks. Yeah. Well, it's, your, <laughs> it's a pan, a personal pan pizza, man. Yeah. What's and your then favorite you pizza? Go to the arcade. I like just a straight up pepperoni. Straight pepperoni? Yeah. From where? Uh, lately, Zito's. Okay. Zito's is pretty good. Uh, I don't really have a favorite yeah, pizza I, place. I, I lean towards Thin Crust or New York style. Hmm. Um, there's a uh, flipping pizza not too far oh, from our yeah. house, and so they they do a pretty good New York style pizza. They Woodstock's do. is a good pizza place. Yeah, Pizza it, Port has a really good pizza. I mean, I will eat a specialty pizza, but if it's like a what's your standard, it's just a pepperoni, pepperoni mushroom for me. All right, uh, Grayson's gone down the uh, the meat route, so anything with meat and green bell peppers is what he's all about. Ooh, so he likes sausage, bacon, pepperoni. What do you like? I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, there's not really any pizza that I wouldn't eat. Uh, There's cheese, a lot that I won't eat. Yep. Cheese pizza, I'm not crazy about because that's just like a cheesy breadstick at that yeah. point. Um, but yeah, there's. I've had pizza. I've had a bunch of pizza. I I, I don't know. Crunchy vegetables do not belong on pizza. I'm so just like, gonna say that. No, I think that's. A, I think there's a place for them. I no, think it's okay in the trash. It's okay, the that's fine. What are peppers? What are uh, bell peppers? That's a crun- vegetable. That's right? a crunchy vegetable, and they don't belong on pizzas. Finney's. But you're fine with a soggy a, vegetable. Yeah. So mushrooms are okay, but Absolutely. bell peppers are a no-no. Neg- yep. The pepperoni should be curly and crispy, too. You betcha. The yes. Finney's at the Circle has a pretty good... They don't. I don't think they call it a pizza. I think they call it a flatbread, but their pepperoni <laughs> one is... It's, Ooh, flatbread. Is that place well, good? It's all, yeah, it's quite good. Okay. Decent beers. We drove by the other day, and we had seen one. They have one in Santa Barbara. Yeah. And uh, I a, saw it there, and it looked good. They're a small family-owned. I can, family owned I can tell you far and away the easiest, worst pizza is the school lunch pizzas that you would get like on Friday at school, in elementary school. I yep. don't know. It was always square. Yeah. And it was just the nastiest, like the bread was all fluffy and oh, doughy. Yeah. It's soft. It's I soft. did dip mine in yeah. ketchup. It was so Oh, that's bad. disgusting. That make- that's so gross. That made, that's, it, yeah. uh, that made it better. That's the sad part. <laughs> it's also always packed, by the way. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's like an hour and a half wait. Perfect. Oof. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's good though. I mean, it tells you it's it's good. It's packed yeah. all the time. So yeah, yeah they good. um oh so f- interesting. Speaking of places that are packed, uh, Core Burger around the corner closed. I told you this, right? So oh, your uh, burger place that yeah, the burger place was there for like three months. Yeah. So they've been building it all through COVID, and it was a big deal. Like huge signs coming soon, coming soon. Their social media was all hyped up. 
We went in two burgers, two beers, fries, 60 bucks. Whoa. It was crazy. It was absolutely insane. And it wasn't that great. And so it was, nobody was ever in there. They folded very quickly, which is sad, but okay. So they had for lease signs up. Yeah. And then they were gone. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Maybe but they- we, we figured, well, maybe because they're going into bankruptcy, they've got to wait and deal with any lien holders or right. if people want equipment back, whatever. I don't know. So now, I saw this yesterday. There's a sign on the outside of the building now, a yep. banner that's hanging next to. They still haven't taken the core burger signs down, which is yeah. weird. So coming soon? It says, coming soon. Let me guess. Go ahead. Is it a spicy chicken joint? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. It's a wing joint. Oh, all right. But the sign is orange and white. If you know anything about wings, those are Hooters colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's called Hoots Wings. Stop. And I was like, either somebody is like bold. Infringing on. Infringing on their property or or it's Hooters. So I looked it up. It's Hooters. They only have a couple of them so far, but it is a no table service counter order version of hooters are they still wearing the hooters outfits no idea but they do have beer they should make all the employees male or female wear the short shorts and the pantyhose did you ever watch the undercover boss when they did hooters no place is a disaster man the, i'm sure yeah yeah well even that show was that show was a disaster it was it was a paid advertorial that yeah. portrayed the brands as caring and compassionate some of them were pretty funny though oh yeah but the anyways i just thought it was interesting because i was like I saw the sign. I was like, that's no. So I looked it up last night. Yeah, and it's a Hooters owned. Are the Hooters wings even any good? The last time I was at a Hooters, okay. I got wings. I thought they were not, yeah, yeah, they got right. smoked wings. They weren't bad. You know, but like on the on the wing spectrum, you have wing stop. You've wing got, stop is better. Yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings. Mm. You've got mm. Hooters. Like, I don't know who's got the best wings. The I, best used to be uh, this place that was a single on its own in Costa Mesa and they closed. Wasn't doesn't pizza have like a wing wing stop? Isn't that their thing? Like, they have their wing street. Wing and street. That's I what it is. Wouldn't eat those if you paid me. Wow. Um, but I would say wing stops probably the best. Like, f- if you want to call them fast food wings, wing nuts is the place that used to be in Costa Mesa. Wing was nuts. the best. Yeah, I remember was that the best. place. It just closed like a year ago. Now what? How makes- much? I was going to say, what makes it the best is the flavor. Just the is flavors. It, okay. Yeah. The flavors. flavors were good. And you could get, so you could do like extra crispy or you could do fried yeah. and grilled. Ooh. So they would f- f- grill them and then fry them or fry them and grill them in whatever order. You could get them all different kinds of flavors. They were super accommodating. I, yeah, I, I prefer dry rubbed flavors yeah. versus lemon sauce. Pepper's bomb. Okay. Yep. Lemon yeah. pepper, uh, garlic parmesan from Wingstop's good. Yeah. So I, I also look at that. And then also the quality of chicken makes a difference. Yeah. You don't want some places dinky little you, wings. Yeah. And Are you, a, you drums or flats? I'm more of a drum guy. I like it. Yeah. See, yeah. I usually get all drums. I don't understand the flats. There's people that no. think that's the way to go. Yeah. I Let's feel like work. I'm playing a harmonica when I'm <laughs> <laughs> I do, That's too much work. I don't want to have to break the thing open and well, suck you, them. You know. no. If you wanted less work, just get the bonus. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's but just that's just a nugget. Nuggets. It's a nugget. <laughs> but it's got the flavor. It's got all the other stuff. It just doesn't have the bone. They're never as crispy. I think Mm-mm. it's the bone because that radiates the heat throughout the inside or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, They're good. Right. Yeah. yeah, I do I do like a good chicken wing. How much steam is fire on the mountain? What is that? Is that a place? Or a that's flavor? a chicken wing place up in uh, Portland. Oh, I never went to it. No. I don't think so. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of where I, we would get chicken wings. I can't Portland. even think. I don't think I've ever been to a wing place with my family. Now, really? there, there have been times we've gone out and we've gone like uh, Korean fried chicken, which were basically Korean fried chicken wings mm-hmm. uh, at some Asian restaurants. Yeah. So we've done that, but you I don't think. Karage? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think we've ever sat down at like a Buffalo Wild Wings or at a Wing Street or any sort of specifically chicken wing joint for a, a, a meal. Every once in a while, I'm like, Meh, chicken wings, and I'll go. There's a, there's a, I think it's a wing stop, like not too far from my house. Yeah. I've never been. It just, I've never been to that one either. It's huh. one of those things where I just, I, I, if I think like, oh, I, I want to grab something quick and easy to eat, it just, it never comes to mind. I, ha- we haven't been to a wing place since we've been back here, um, but we used to go to Fire on the Mountain. I could have swore you were the one that recommended Fire on the Mountain to me when I moved. It up probably there. was me. Then I must have been there. But yeah, I just don't remember. I mean, it's place, not a place I went often. Their tots were good. The tots are good. They had four locations. I a hundred percent. If you looked them up, you would remember. Yeah, hmm. but. Yeah, we don't go to Wingstop here. 
We had we were at a birthday party last weekend that catered wing stop. Oh, really? And it was actually really good. Yeah. They had good catering. I was surprised. Interesting. They yeah. had good ranch. Good okay. ranch makes a yeah. difference. Blue it cheese does. is not acceptable. I don't Even do with blue buffalo? Cheese. No. Take your blue cheese and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> But I like blue cheese on a salad. Take like a your wedge blue salad. cheese and throw it in the garbage. Yeah, like I like crispy blue, vegetables on, on a pizza? charcuterie board. Blue cheese hmm. on some crackers. Blue cheese I'm on anything else. F off. I'm hit or miss on the blue cheese. Like if I get a salad that has like blue cheese crumbles on it, I'm fine with it. But there's always that one bite that just it's hits too you. much. Yeah, dude. Like Humboldt Fog is amazing cheese. Mm-hmm. Absolutely amazing cheese. In a charcuterie board, do you keep it off of anything else? What about a burger with bacon? Nope. On it? No. Oh, I want the bacon. I don't want the blue yeah. cheese. Oh, that would, I, like a bacon I, blue burger? No. Or especially like if, if you did like a steak or something like that and you had like the, the melted blue cheese mm, on yes. top. I would do that. Yes. Yeah. No, thank you. Some no? mushrooms. No. Yeah. Uh-uh. Interesting. Mm. No. Not for so me. So you've been on this bacon kick, I guess, because you've been making bacon. Well, so I every year or so, I try. I, I actually should do it more often, but about every yes. year or so, I end up For making, our sake, you should do it more yes. often. Yep. I end up making bacon. So I was, happened to be at Costco and they, it, you have to specifically ask because they have bacon, they have belly, but it's in like kind of, you know, two inch wide strips. Okay. Um, so they're not good for what I needed them for. So I bought a 10 pound belly. So what do you call them up and let the butcher No, know, I just hey. ask, you just knock on the window and oh. hey, can I get a full one? Yeah, no problem. They have them in the back because they portion everything there. Oh, okay. So, you know, got a 10 pound. So it ends up being... I don't know what three hundred dollars worth of bacon. No, it's like thirty bucks. It's cheap. It's really, <laughs> really? cheap. That's, oh yeah, it's cheap. So bought that and then portioned it into quarters. I'm doing two different bacon cures, and then I have a quarter left. I've got to take to my brother in law, and then the third or you the fourth quarter left that you got to take to your brother in law. How do you figure? You want a raw <laughs> pork belly? Um, so the uh, I did a thing the other night where I I should have probably salted it and dried it out overnight. But I didn't. I cut the belly into like I don't know bite-sized pieces, like pretty thick, like pieces of bacon, essentially. Smoked them for two hours, and with just salt, pepper, and uh, garlic salt, smoked them for two hours, and then air fried them for twenty minutes, and they were like super crispy. And then dipped them in guacamole. Oh man, it was the so picture good. is good. Yeah, it's so good. And you take the knife, it's like you know, like just that beautiful crisp. And then so I've got two bacon's curing. I have one that is brown sugar jalapeno. And then another one that is uh, maple syrup, jalapeno, and habanero. And so those in about a week, they'll come out. They get rinsed, patted dry, and then smoked to a medium-ish internal temperature. And then I've got a – my mom has an actual slicer. Oh, right. I was going to ask you if you were doing it all by hand or if you – Normally I do it by hand, um, but I'll go grab the slicer. You just It's not that bad. You stick them in the freezer. Um, for oh, like okay. 30 minutes okay. or so give it a little solidif- solidification yeah because like when i even the other day when i was cutting portioning that belly that i smoked it was like already getting to be yeah. difficult to yeah. do um halfway through so but yeah man it's it's super easy as, are you gonna cut them as thick thick slices of bacon i haven't decided yeah i don't know we should normalize using bacon as uh, tortilla chips to eat guacamole because that's yeah. that's the right way. <laughs> so to I have they call some it keto. It, yeah, <laughs> <Right>. the, basically, <laughs> um, I had a, obviously I have some left, but I was gonna try and like stick them in the air fryer again and re air fry like them. Double fry them. Kinda like if you guys wanted yeah, to try them, like, them just, up, really. yeah, just throw throw them in the air fryer for yeah. a few minutes. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, again, though, I think if I had salted it to dry it out a little bit, it would have got even more crispy. Right. And doing that and then rinsing it probably would have – they they were a little salty so because I had raw salt on it, right? That would have kicked the salt level to an appropriate level. Um, but, yeah, hmm. we'll see. Interesting. So, yeah, you just – it's just the, the stuff, like, they're basically sitting in – I made a rub basically, right? And with, but it has curing salt in it, so that's nitrates. And you put, I think I put twenty jalapenos across two bags, all oh, chopped nice. up. And so those will just sit in the, they sit in the refrigerator, and you just turn them over every couple of days, and then yeah, smoke them. Super easy. So speaking of refrigerator, um, we had a jar of like chili oil. Uh-huh. Or a container of some sort. That of wasn't oil. supposed to be in the refrigerator. No, no, it was supposed to be in the, oh, in the okay. fridge. It was because after opening, it had to be chilled or whatever. Oh, uh, but, real quick, jalapeno crisp from um, from Trader Joe's. It's like like a chili oil, but it's got yeah. jalapeno stuff in it. Dude, so good, so good. Yeah. Okay, go. This was something like that, and I think it was actually more of like in a tub. But somehow, some of the contents spilled out, 
and we have a, a fridge with like glass shelving mm. in there. No, oh. and so it spilled onto the glass, and then it went around the glass and is between the glass and the plastic slash metal oh, no. arms. You can't get it out. No. <laughs> oh, no. So I, I, I took the shelf off, cleaned yeah. off the surface. Yeah. So the surface is clear, but you can see the like the chili oil. So it's like this orangish liquid that's just in small spots. Yeah, take it outside and stick the hose and pressure it out. So I tried that. Yeah. It didn't work. I, oh, really? I, I flipped it over. I put Dawn yeah, yeah. In, in, the, in, the, in the crevices to hopefully let it soak in. Right. Then I filled the... I had to put it in the tub because my sink wasn't large enough sure. to put the shelf flat. Then I was pushing down on the glass to to bend the glass. Oh, no. Did you break it? No, no. Oh, okay. Enough to then create a little bit of suction yeah. between the frame. I tried all sorts of things. I let it soak overnight. I got, It's still there? Yes. That's right. <laughs> and the weird thing is I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, this, this shelf has to come apart somehow. How does yeah. the glass get... It... No. Is it glued together, maybe? The glass... It's like... I want to say the plastic's bonded around the glass. Yeah. There's a metal chrome strip on the front, and I was looking. The the chrome overlaps the glass. Sure. And I was like, all right, I got a little hotel room key. And I was like, oh, there's adhesive there. I'm like, okay, maybe if I lift that off, that whole front cap will pop off, and there'll be a groove that the glass slides in. No. The glass is somehow, like, magically part of the (laughs) shelf. And then I'm like, oh, this fucking sucks. I'm like, how much is the new shelf? Nope. For a fridge. No, I bet you it's too much money. It's, it's probably the, the same amount as the fridge. You need to buy a new fridge. That's yep. the the, uh, the cheapest I could find the shelf for was 109 bucks. Jesus. Yep. That's a new fridge. Yeah. No, just, okay, so you have a little chili oil in there now. That's well, it. What I did is I just moved it to the upper shelf where I can't look down on it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can't see it. It doesn't matter. It. Yeah. But it was one of those things like, who the fuck would make a shelf that would allow moisture to get into a spot that you couldn't get out? Yeah, that's yeah, weird. seems really weird. Yeah, that's not a good idea. And then, the frigid air. So it, that they but, could sell hundred nine dollar shelves, and right? that was the 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 like got to increase that P and A. That's the that's the wholesale <laughs> pricing. Like I'm sure retail's like one eighty or something. How'd you like find that. wholesale price? Google search. You'll find oh. you'll find places that'll sell parts like just over their cost or whatever. Lowe's is offering it to him after his complaints on their <laughs> <laughs> customer service the other day. But what what I what I can't figure out though is like I want to see the episode of how this is made. Yeah, refrigerator shelves because I'm looking at it. It's got plastic. It's got metal and it's got glass. And other than the chrome. It's got to be glued together. But I don't see any seams. It's the weirdest thing. It's like, I. I'm what looking, brand is it? It's a Whirlpool. Oh. But so it's a. But Whirlpool built a bunch of shit for like Kenmore and other yeah, stuff. Yeah, so it, yeah. I don't. I don't know. And the, and the fridge is. What? We bought it like early days of the pandemic. So it's oh, you got a three fridge. years old. Yeah, it's, it's relatively new. Yeah. Um, but it's the weirdest thing. I've, I've never had a refrigerator shelf that I had that problem before. So it was just like, oh, I don't know. That's bizarre. I think the next thing I might try to do is, uh, if it really bothers me, I might try to do some sort of like maybe like Alka-Seltzer or something or something. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like fizzy. Yes. Effervescent. Yeah, because I mean, it's not even, a, I couldn't, like a sheet of paper wouldn't go in there. Like to, to get in there. I couldn't, it's like, that weird. tight? Yes. And uh-huh. nothing. That's yeah. bizarre. It's the weirdest thing. And it's like, I'm kind of curious. How do you make this? But yeah, now cool. you now you're just doing it for the sake of because you feel like <laughs> now you're being science. defeated by the, <laughs> yeah. by the fridge. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I got most of it out, so I mean, it does look a lot better. Yeah. But if you look closely, you can still see orange little like it looks like puddles, but they're really small. They're maybe like eighth uh, eighth an inch to three eighth inch wide that's by so weird. about an inch, and it's towards the back of the shelf because that's where the container oh. was. Well, so then, eh, whatever. Yeah, as long as we keep a full fridge, you'll never see it. Yeah, but of course, I, you know it's on the top yeah, of the yeah. shelf, so you'll never see it anyways. Get a, get a but, fridge mat. Yeah. Now, if I mirrored my fridge ceiling, then you'd see it. That would be weird. Make your fridge look bigger. Speaking of mats, <laughs> I need to get a blackstone mat. Have you guys seen those? What's what? a blackstone? No, what do you mean mat? a blackstone mat? So I have a blackstone. Either, okay, it's a griddle. Yes, yeah. I know what that is. Yeah. yeah. So, do you keep your blackstone outside? Yes. Does it rust on you? Probably. Like the griddle top. I haven't looked at it in a while. It's rusted. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Then you so, just Brillo it. Wh- yeah, but it's it. not that easy. Like, I have to get a wire brush no. and go through the drill yeah, motor, yeah, yeah. strip it down to bare metal. Or you just and then do what I did last time and just don't use that part of the griddle. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Yeah, you could. I did. That's what yeah. I did. Yeah, that would I be the grown up thing of you to do. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, what what we do? I have two cups that are upside down under the cover. Uh huh. And those are because I don't have a lid. Do you have, I have a, a lid. lid? I got the when I bought mine, it was the old version, yep. and it was fifty percent off. Oh, okay. So I bought it for like two hundred bucks, maybe one hundred fifty bucks. Anyways, um, I don't have the lid, so I have the fabric cover okay and i put that but i have two cups to just stop it from touching and pooling water and yep eh, it so helps it doesn't do a perfect job i have the lid okay i have a cover that and goes over said it. lid yeah and it still does it. okay so they make this silicone mat that you put on the blackstone griddle top that keeps the I condensation see. from sure developing on the metal and that's how much dollars i don't know. I haven't looked that far uh, into it. Yeah. yeah. See, that's always the rub. Yeah. yeah. Catherine sent it to me the other day, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to. Need no, to I didn't know that, they had that. At I all. didn't either. If you get it, let what, me know how it works. What's it do, though? It just keeps the griddle from, like, condensation from sitting on it. Yeah. Huh. Right? Because it's, it's cast iron. Yeah. So it's basically having a cast iron pan. Understood. And if you just, you know, let water sit there, it'll rust. Yeah. Even no matter how well time. you season the thing. Yeah. So what's magical about the mat, though? I guess the silicone somehow keeps the condensation from sitting on the mat because the mat sits directly on the griddle top. Okay, and it's probably heavy enough. Yeah, the condensation's not under yeah. it. It's yeah. all on it, yeah. basically. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. How much so, do they want for the mat? I haven't looked. Yeah, yeah I haven't looked. But uh, That's where you'll find it. Oh, yeah. $89. You're like, ah. Yeah. Uh, I know, but with the amount of wire wheels and the time that it takes to do it, it's like a two-hour process to strip it and reseason it. and. Brilliant. Just let, I tried let, burrowing. It, mine, it works on mine. Uh, Cam didn't have fun with it. No, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I actually like it. my Blackstone. Yeah, I want right. to use it. Iron's a mineral. You're fine. Yeah. I, uh, I saw one. So they came out with, they have a newer version of the same one that I have that does have a lid. It's a 36 inch, but now mine's two burner and this one's a four, Ooh. which is pretty cool actually yeah. because they're Four, all four zones are controllable, so that would be kind of nice because I, I do have I found with mine with just the two burners, it can be kind of tricky yep. to control the temp. So I've always got my my infrared thermometer out there. Very nice, you know? very nice. Yeah, it mine's gets, it gets nerdy around here. Mine's a two burner also, and I the same like it's not big enough to truly separate the zones. Right. So it's kind of but yeah. I mean, well, I found even on like even point. on low. Once you get that thing hot, low is freaking hot. It is. Like it is. I think it was. I was trying to cook something like 700 ish degrees and it was like shooting way over that. Yeah. Which is a yeah. bummer. Did pancakes on it though. So Easter we did pancakes, eggs, um, veg, some other so stuff. With your, with your two, two burner setup, like what's the variance in temperature from like right where the burner is towards like the perimeter or the edges? Not much. Mm -hmm. Like that, a hundred degrees swing or not even that much? Not even that much. Cause okay. the, the, the way the rings are, are pretty good good like they're spaced pretty well okay and they the that surface the the cast iron yeah, is really heat. good yeah. at doing a pretty even job of, of heating so uh, not too much mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, but i love the thing i mean yeah. i don't use it enough yeah. um which is you know, kind of a bummer but you know I, half the time like for a while i wasn't even using the the pellet grill or the pellet smoker i've been using my charcoal weber a lot lately oh really yeah and because I bought uh, mesquite bricks for it, oh, too. Yeah. And so I'll get the coals going, and then I'll throw a handful of fresh ones on there. And you can kind of smoke. I did a tri-tip on it the other day. Yeah. It was, That's... had a pretty good smoke ring to it. Yeah. So. I, I do, uh, when I do burgers, I yeah. do them on my charcoal Weber. Right. And then put some wood, some yeah. mesquite wood in there. Get a nice little smoke flavor. Mm -hmm. and... I like cowboy charcoal, but it's a pain in the ass. I can't yeah. figure out how to make a burger that's cheaper than just going out and buying one. You, you can't. Mean, what? If you if you look at like a so you mean like you're talking like about for all of the you've done yes. like all the costing right. for all the ingredients. Yeah, exactly. And labor. Yes. Uh -huh. And the time and everything versus yeah, going somewhere and just getting a burger. But it's a labor of love. No, I mean if you so you here's the thing too, you're not buying the, in bulk. Well, yeah, exactly. Right. So if you go to Costco and you buy 85 pounds of ground beef, it's going to be cheaper. Yeah. But see, even last night, I went and bought four half-pound patties. You bought the preformed patties? Preformed patties from Pavilions. Sadness. Yeah. 13 59 for four half-pounds. So two pounds of hamburger, yeah, yeah. right? Okay. We filleted them because half-pound so patties are giants. We yeah, made yeah. eight burgers. Okay. Okay. So now you're... For thirteen fifty nine. All right. Now you need buns. 
which we bought at Smart and Final. So a 36 pack of buns. 36 <laughs> buns. <laughs> well, because they were Christ. left over from a barbecue that we had the weekend before. Uh huh. So they, you know, that was, I mean, what, pennies for each bun. Sure. You know? So you're up to, how much did you say your meat was? 1359. So you're at about a buck 80 plus yeah. your, so you're, you're probably at about, let's say you're almost $2. Yeah. Okay. What else did you put on it? Uh, mayo, ketchup, okay. lettuce, Pickles. avocado. Fuck, what? No. Avocado. Yes. Okay, hang on. Just so your condiments with your yeah, I know he's so mad with I, your, the rage. Jesus, with your, he needs a pickle bag. Uh, with the okay, so your condiment part. Hang on, on the avocado, you're probably eight to ten cents, I would guess, in, sure. in condiments. Yeah. And then you've got avocado is probably. How much avocado you get? Half an avocado? It's quarter of an avocado. Quarter. Okay, so you're a buck, let's call it, because avocados are ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I'm but going they're with like a buck. two bucks an avocado. Doesn't matter. Okay. And you buy them at Trader Joe's in the bag of oh, what, yeah. six? Yeah. It's a decent deal. Yeah. Okay, we'll call it 50 cents. Okay, fair. So let's just say your burger all in, you're at about 275. Yeah. It's about where I think I'm. My math is mathing. Yeah. Okay, which is fine. I can get a burger down the street for uh, two dollars fifty. Yeah, yeah, but the quality Did you put cheese not on as it? good. Yes. Okay. There's okay, a cheese. little bit more. Um, uh, I don't know. Sliced cheddar cheese. Yeah, cheddar. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know sliced cheese. Well, I, I was like, what do you mean? What kind of cheese? But I guess Plastic I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Not like American. Pepper Jack. No, there's no, no. Other cheddar. different flavors. Cheddar. Sharp cheddar to so be it, more. It is is obviously, if you have the ingredients already or you're using it for other things, you're fine. But when you go out and you're like, oh, like, we don't have ketchup in the house, right? But ketchup we is- have ketchup here, which is weird because neither of us will eat it. Right. But we have it for Avery. Oh, there you and go. it's actually called tomato blood. I've never <laughs> not had ketchup. Ketchup's disgusting. What? We yeah. actually had to buy a bottle of ketchup yesterday, and it's like four the first or something bottle. Yeah, my uh, our our nana Sandy had a, a craving for a uh, meatloaf sandwich. And so Jeanette was like, all right, I'll make some meatloaf. All right. And so she... She went traditional she, with the ketchup top. Yeah. So nice. she baked meatloaf last night. And so we're having Nana Sandy over later this evening and we're doing... I do. Sandwiches. I will have... Uh, when I make curry verse, I use ketchup as a base. Yeah. So, I mean, that's have the first Have you ever had curry No. Dude. Dude. It's basically like sausage. And you cook the sausage and then you make a curry ketchup, basically, yeah. for the top. And you sprinkle dusted curry on it it's pretty good oh hmm. so interesting good. you can buy curry versus sauce like uh Mattern. have you been to matter yes the deli no. the the sausage place no it's okay. right on chapman yeah go down chapman it's next to the it's next to the wiener schnitzel yeah yeah it's in the same parking lot as the wiener schnitzel okay but it's a german deli and their sausages are bomb but okay. you can also get the curry worst sauce if you just want to buy it yeah okay. made with full of sugar good to know Good to know. But yeah, if, if but if you were going, hey, I'm gonna have a barbecue, and you go out and buy all the ingredients to make burgers, it adds up. It does add up. But if you look at if you go back and do food cost per portion, it's not. That it's bad. not that it's bad. Not. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you can get a charcoal wood smoked burger, right? You can't get that at, at the Omega Burger down the street. Okay, you be careful, man. Omega Burger is a fantastic burger. I'm not saying and it's, it's not a great a good burger. burger. It's a good burger. But I can't burger. get a charcoal wood no, smoked burger. No, you got to go to the there. Carl's for Carl's that. Carl's Jr. They're not <laughs> wood smoked. No. They're flame broiled. That's fine. Wood smoked, you can go to Wood Ranch. Yeah. But yeah. then you're that's a restaurant restaurant. And you're that's paying $25 burger. Bucks for a burger. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's too much. And I see, I if I'm, I like a good backyard, just smash burger. Yeah. Right, so it gets pretty, especially if you're doing eighth pound burgers. It yeah. gets pretty I, I, cheap. I think for us, it's just because In and Out is kind of our go-to. It's kind of hard to beat that. It's price. tough when to I, beat. In when I got a family of three, you can eat it In and Out for like fifteen bucks. I'm yeah. kind of over In and Out. Yeah. What? Yeah. I'm never over In and Out. No. Yeah. I mean, it rivals TK Burger in my opinion, but TK is uh, good. TK's yeah, but In and Out's way more convenient. Than Habit's TK. good. Yeah. Habit's good. Habit. There's that a drive-through Habit, Habit actually down the street. I haven't been to a Habit in a while. I'd never seen one with a drive-through. Hmm. The one off of Barranca in Irvine, uh, over There's by no the district. There, yeah, no, yeah, really, yes. I've eaten at that one tons of times too. Horrendous line. It just oh sucks. weird. Yeah. I've never seen. I maybe I just never noticed. But the the line of cars just driving by the building real slowly. I mean, I've always just gone in and ate. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, I never, never knew they had a drive through. Yeah, huh? Weird. But that place is pretty good. I do. I have gone back to chopped chilies on my In and Out though. Yes, animal oh, yeah. style chopped chilies is my go-to. But they're pickled. Never had so. chopped chilies. Nope. 
Yep. See, yeah. once yeah. Yeah. I will say I do so like pickled onions. How old were you? With, like the first time what, or the last what, time you had a pickle? When did a pickle hurt you? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was young. I was quite young. <laughs> Um, you know your taste. You know your taste you. buds change every like. Oh yeah, no, I've had pickles since then. But, but you like pickled onion? Disgusting. Yes. See, because I make like a really good quick pickle. That's not like a dill thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a combination of the super salty flavor okay. with the crunch. That's the part I don't care for. I like pickled jalapenos. Do you like relish? No, relish is gross too. Okay. Pickle relish. Ugh. Yeah. 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 No. So it, it's the combination of like that super salty, like Weird. almost soury, salty type, yeah, yeah, and then with uh, with the crunchy aspect. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's gross. I make a really good. It's just. Is it just going back to that crunchy vegetable thing that you hate so much? Like, is it just? I mean, for texture? the most part, like I don't carrots? like. I love carrots, but raw. I don't. That's a crispy yeah. vegetable. Yeah, yeah, I that's love crunchy raw as heck, carrots. man. I know, but huh. but it's I, I but I don't like um, un, raw uncooked. How are you with uh, food onions? touching? Uh, not not great at it. Um, Do you have a the special certain... plate with the walls? No, I'm not <laughs> that bad. I'm not that bad. But like, I don't have a problem eating a burrito. You know, like that's one of my favorite yeah. foods yeah. is a burrito. Yeah. yeah. But like, if I'm having say Thanksgiving dinner, yeah, like things need to be like oh, separated. And Thanksgiving like, dinner, the gravy should touch everything. Well, that's fine. That's yeah, a, okay. that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. It's almost a condiment. At that yeah, point. that's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but like, so like, you take. Uh, like take onions, onions, mm. carrots, uh, garlic, and I'll put that, and I'll just do a quick pickle. That's basically it's two one one, so it's two parts of water, one part vinegar, one part sugar, mm. and you can cut that. Like usually, I'll do, I'll cut the sugar way way down, and then I'll use a little bit of red wine vinegar and some like. Uh, it just depends on what ratio, what mix I want to do, and then a handful of peppercorn, salt, you know, pepper, that kind of stuff, and. That's a really good, that's a nice little summer salad. And we let that sit for a couple hours and then put some some of that on a plate with some tomato. You like tomatoes, I hope? Mm. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Slice some cherry tomatoes or whatever tomatoes you want to use. And then a little bit of olive oil drizzle on that. That's a good little salad. I like my tomatoes when they're diced up in a bruschetta. Okay. Or a, or a sauce. salsa. Yeah. Or a ketchup. Or a ketchup. Uh, yeah. But I don't like tomatoes on a burger, for instance. Oh. I usually will get no tomatoes on my burger, actually, except for it in and out. But normally I'll ask for no tomatoes. Oh, like a sandwich if I go to Jersey Mike's, right? Yeah. Get a number 13, no tomato. No tomato. Yep. Yeah. Huh. Because I don't like the soggy factor. Not I love either. tomatoes, but tomatoes yeah, will that. ruin a bread. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. D- depending on how they stack the ingredients. If if you're, the especially if you're getting it to go. Yeah. Right. It's a travel. Like already with the oil vinegar they put, your bread's, oh, you're, you're, on a, you're on a timeline. Yep. You don't get that? No, hell no. It's soggy as bread. I know, but it's good. It doesn't matter. Tell them to put it in a cup and do it at home. No, I don't like vinegar, though. Yeah, that's weird. So salt and vinegar chips are not on your radar. Disgusting. Dude, they're so good. Or like hot sauces that are too vinegary. Mm. Nope. I'm out. What's your... Do you do the... uh, What's that thing called? The Fuego box? No. Oh, okay. What's that? The The hot sauce subscription? Oh, no. Yeah, Yeah, so they call it... hot sauce. I'm surprised you You don't 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 like hot sauce. Matthew? What? I'm surprised you don't do that. Do what? The hot sauce? Yeah. Yeah. I like hot stuff, but not enough to the sauces. Oh, really? Like, I think it's just too much of a pain in the ass. Because, I mean, when we go out, I'll add spice to things. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll I'll add jalapenos and stuff. But at home, like, based on what we eat and the, eh. No? Like, we use a lot of, like, the chili powder. Uh Uh-huh. Like the chili flakes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll use those in the cooking yeah. process. Yeah, or yeah. even as a seasoning process, you know, okay. it comes out on the. You know, if I got uh, some steamed broccoli, I'll grab the chili flakes and okay. douse the, the the broccoli with that. So we use it in that way, and then like the chili oil or chili paste, we we'll use those. But any sort of like hot sauce, like condiment type of thing, we have two giant really. jars <laughs> of tapatio, and what we have two huge things of sriracha. Okay, but and then I've got and a sriracha is like hard to come by these days. Oh yeah. Don't uh, don't oh, look yeah. at me weird, but uh, my go-to is Taco Bell Mild. Keep a jar of it in the fridge. That's not even hot sauce. That's yeah, just that's just ketchup. like no. I don't like super spicy. Sort stuff, of okay? spicy ketchup. It is, yeah. which is why I like it. Don't you have like some like Latino in you? Uh, no, oh. no. Depending on the week that you ask my dad, we were anywhere between <laughs> Cherokee, Puerto Rican, <laughs> Mexican. It, it kind of bounced around. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I. Uh, Okay, you. You don't like vinegar, but yeah. you like lime. Yeah, like citrus. Oh. Speaking of lime, Costco has these lime chips right now. Lime okay. tortilla chips. Okay, I mean, find them, buy yeah. them. 
Oh my goodness, they are so good. Anyways, I, yes, I, I like okay. that. It is a Sunday. I might have to go to Costco. Do it. Um, the Okay, so I made a chimichurri, but I mixed up the rest. Well, I didn't mix it up. I tried it a different way. So I did uh, mostly cilantro. Mm-hmm. Cilantro is delicious. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mostly cilantro, a little bit of uh, parsley instead of like the parsley forward. And then I substituted, I'd say, 80% of the vinegar with lime juice. So I did more of, more of like a cilantro, sort of a Mexican-inspired mm-hmm. chimichurri. Mm-hmm. It might be one of the best ones I've ever that made. That sounds phenomenal. And a grip of garlic. Okay, yeah. Just I'm raw in. garlic. Yeah. Oh my God, it was so good. Sounds, and we made a... Did you put that on some steak? I put on a New York strip steak. Atta boy. That sounds that good. damn good. Put it in a yeah. flour tortilla, call it a taco. I mean, you, you could. Too. You could have. Yeah. But we didn't because I try not to eat a lot of tortillas. Well, why? that's fine. I just, I live a pretty carb minimalistic lifestyle the, most like, of the time, target. even though I look fat. Target no, has don't. like some decent low carb tortillas. They're like, oh uh, yeah, I've had them. They're they're okay. They're good. The only thing that bums me out is most of them. So I found corn, but I can't find them again. The most of them are flour yes. and they're soft. Yeah, like they're that chewy, yeah, soft, spongy. Yeah, yeah, and that kind of bums me out. But I did find these low carb corn ones once that were really freaking good. And Mission I can't find has them again. the tiny ones. Do they have their corn? They're, yeah, the corn and flour. Oh, okay. I'll um, have to find those again. And then they also have like the soft taco size, but yeah. the soft taco size. I like the street size. Harder to find, so yeah. I, I get the the Target brand generic. Oh, really? But they have a yeah, carb conscious flour tortilla. Yeah, so. flat. No, the flour ones I've had. Yeah. It's the the corn ones that are hard. Corn. To find. It's Mission. They have a, the the tiny ones. Maybe I'll have to like go find it. Three you have like diameter, the street four inch yeah. street size. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I um I love that kind of stuff. But anyway, so yeah, that's another thing you should try. So it's I'm delish. gonna uh, circle back on the selling things online. Okay. <laughs> so remember, I told you guys that uh, I sold my snowboard deck online. Yeah. I think I told you that. I sold it for twenty dollars. <laughs> yes. Okay. And the guy hasn't picked it up yet. Yeah. Still has not picked it up. How, that's so weird. But it's he paid been you. three weeks. Did he Venmo you? Yeah. And it's just just sitting in my Venmo has account. Has he said anything? Nope. Guy went to Hawaii. Haven't heard from him since. Is he dead? I don't know. He that's could weird. be. Did he forget? And that? he doesn't have like a profile, like a marketplace profile. It doesn't have one. Yeah. It's like when you click on it, there's no avatar. There's yeah, nothing. yeah, yeah. It's just like yeah. the most generic thing. And I don't know what to do. I mean, I haven't. I don't know. Do I? Do I relist it and give him his twenty dollars back? Like, no. I think that's he owns it. You're storing it. Charge him storage. I should. Yeah, <laughs> twenty bucks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, send him another twenty dollar request. I, sh- I should. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll just. Did send you him try to message him? I've messaged him three times, and he responded. And then he's like, "Oh, sorry, we're going to Maui." It was like a last minute deal. He's like, "Yeah, we're going to Maui now. We'll be back in a week." I haven't heard anything from him. And it's been how long? Three weeks since that's- he paid me the money and it's 20 bucks so it's not like a huge amount of money no, but at the same still time weird. it's like it's a weird it's yeah. super weird yeah people are strange man yeah. we have to sell a couch and i'm not looking forward to that no man we're selling our dining room table and i'm not looking uh, forward to it we sold a bunch of furniture and it was i think we were you know we've I, matthew you, and i've talked about this and i'm the one that's like nope absolutely not yeah f off yeah yeah. yeah yeah i can't deal with these people are you replacing your dining room set or are you just- yeah i built a dining room table this morning well, I mean, I assembled it. Let's be honest. Here. I was going to say, <laughs> Catherine wanted me to build. Where did build you get it for her? Uh, living spaces. Yeah, their their stuff's not bad. No, nah, I yeah. mean for the price, it, that's why I was telling Catherine. She wanted me to build her a dining room table. I'm like, right. it's fine, but I don't have the time to do that. You it's going to take me forever either. to get around to it. Right. Well, and it's I a, have this a space. A, I could put. I could do it in the garage. You in the space in the garage to do that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But we, we we stumbled across this table yeah. at living spaces, and for the cost. And the convenience, it's, it would have cost me almost the same amount in wood right, to right, do it. Right. And it's what's like, it made out of? Uh, it's a veneer top. Yeah. Like so what's a, the veneer? M- MDF um, and then some. It's a. Is it oak? It's okay. like a darker oak color. Um, round, round, square. Rectangular. Rectangular. Right. Yep. Like yeah. A so, farm table style. Uh, yeah, kind of has yeah. a bench on one side. Yeah. So the the other half of the story is she bought four super super old vintage wood chairs okay. off of facebook marketplace when we were up in Washington. she wanted something to match basically she wanted something that the chairs would fit with right yeah. so i disassembled all the chairs sanded them all down they were <laughs> this is kind of funny we bought them they were a like a battleship gray color underneath that was an avocado green Ooh. so these things were <laughs> they've been around circle circa 1970s sure. ish um but got them down to the bare wood you know, repainted them all, put them all back together with fresh hardware, everything. So that all got done finally. And then, yeah, now we finally got the table to go with it. So, um, I've always been more of a metal worker. 
Mm. Like I've never been, I mean, my grandfather was always into woodwork and stuff and I would help him make some stuff, but I was never as into that as I was as like, I've done metal sculpture and I love, you know, metal stuff and a lot of fab work. Uh, but I did buy a, a rotary saw recently. Very nice. Yeah. Very and I nice. I even built a planter. Hey now. Yeah. Hey look now. out. Yeah. Wood. I'm coming for you. Oh, <laughs> I would. <laughs> my her. Wait a minute. Oh. Um, but I, I think it would be rad to build your own table. But to your point, like it sucks because by the time you, you have to really want to do it. Yes. There's no, it's, it's not an economic thing anymore. No. Right. No. Well, and the other part is, is like you can build it perfectly from a mechanical standpoint and then fuck it all up in the finishing process you like can do that the stain yeah. goes off or yeah. like the polyurethane doesn't kick right or whatever and he's like Ugh. that all sounds like a pain in the ass well and finding good wood like you have to go to ganal you can't obviously you can't go to home depot yeah, or lowe's yeah. none of the big box lumber no work. no there is so. this there's a place down the street well there's a place have you been to the exotic wood place in santa Ana? No. That place is rad. It's by the train station. Okay. And they have stuff where you're like, I've never even heard of this before oh, yeah. in my Interesting. life. Interesting. It's super, super, super cool, but also very expensive. It's yeah. a it's like a woodworker place. Yeah. Like you would go if you're turning wood. There's a place down the street too that's like interesting woods and hardwares and stuff. Rocklers? I think it's Rocklers. Yeah. yeah. I've never been in it, but I've drive by it all the cool. time. I'm like, oh, I would need to go inside. Yeah. I if bought, you Yeah, I was gonna say I, I got some old wood and <laughs> <laughs> how old? <laughs> Is well, it at least forty three years? Was old. it reclaimed? No, yeah, re- reclaimed barnwood. Yeah, yeah. And uh, down in San San Juan Capistrano. Oh, okay. Oh, good spot to get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That Rocklers is cool. cool though. Check yeah. out Rocklers. This I would cool like spot. to. When I was that, when I had my house in Oregon, I was going to do. My plan was to build a big farm table mm-hmm. out of because you reclaimed wood up yep. there. Barnwood's yeah. all over the place. Yep. And then I just never got around to it, and then I was like, meh. And then I would have had to buy wood stuff. I don't know mm. wood tools, and I don't know how to glue shit together uh you could figure it out i'm sure yeah 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 the other nice thing is that aaron my brother-in-law owns a cabinet company so i just uh, i can ask him to yeah. cut things for me yeah that makes he sense has a That's CNC. The convenience, yeah. yeah well like with the forerunner i want to do that platform and i'm pretty sure how i've got it all laid out is going to work so i just need to figure it all out and have him he said he'd cut it for me there yeah i mean you yeah. Can build a cabinet in the forerunner right I mean, that's essentially, are you just building it's a, really a platform? Low. So I'm, well, I'm going to do a platform with a, a fold out part. So when the seats go down, it flattens everything out. And then oh, I'll have two drawers. Gotcha. Nothing super deep, probably like eight, nine inches. Cause I don't want to lose all that space. So kind of like a decked system. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. they're pretty basic. I mean, yeah. It's pretty straightforward, but I just right. need to get around to it. It sounds like Storage. a decent project. And the other question yeah. is, is like, okay, how big do you make the pieces? Because then. When you take it out, you got to store. Well, it'll just stay in there. Oh, yeah. you would leave it's, it it's permanent. Yeah, yeah, it'll be permanent. Okay. Yeah. And you'd go, like, you basically just stick it in and you use turnbuckles to go to the cargo hooks. Right. And it just stays in there. Okay. And the reason, like, it, it'd be nice to have drawers because now I have this big basket that's got, like, I always have hiking boots, you know, bathing suit, like, all kinds of random crap, a baseball glove. Uh, so it'd be nice to not have that stuff just floating in a big basket that then takes up all the space, right? Yeah, it, it's just smart. in a couple drawers. And then like all my recovery gear is in a huge Pelican case. And I would rather just be able to put that in a, a drawer. It would be a lot nicer. Uh, and then the platform, you know, for you to build simple. wooden drawers as well. Yeah. Yeah. The baseball glove is certainly the most random thing. There's in two. That list I think there might things. be two baseball gloves in there. Is that, like I get the swimsuits. You stumble across like a nice swimming hole and yeah. it makes sense. You don't have to play Although catch. I would probably not go with a swimsuit on, but that's just me, you know. Well, but or if I go to my, I buy my mom's or I go to my sister's. Oh, gotcha. They have pools. Gotcha. Okay. My play catch with. I don't know if you want to play catch. I like playing catch. My nephew plays baseball. I'll play catch with him. Hey, look, I love baseball. No yeah. judgment. It was just random. That's yeah. Right. yeah right. It, it, from an overlanding standpoint, it did seem like <laughs> it, did, yeah. it is overlanding, overlanding not related. Guy with that. no kids. Yeah. yeah. It's a little random. I find random children and play baseball. <laughs> hey, you do you, boo. So I, uh, I don't give them free candy. If speaking of, God, of, of, I charge uh, for it. Baseball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you charge her for the candy. Yeah. I uh, I picked up a softball glove and I joined a adult rec league softball. Have you ever played adult rec league softball? No, this okay. is gonna be my first season. That's be interesting. Are you? Did you get cleats? Yes, I got I got uh, turf. Hold on, this is super timely because I came from Dick's to here yeah. looking at turf shoes. Oh, yeah. I guess because you I'm doing the. Japanese tournament for our employer. Oh, you're doing that one? Yeah, I don't. You're not doing that? No, no. (laughs) Come on, man. We need you. I work with these people. I don't want to play with them. 
<laughs> you know, it's like it's, it's one of those things. You invited like, one of them over for wow. the fourth. Yeah, but I mean, the uh, it's a it's a different vibe. Okay, but it's also the fact that like the games are not who. So who are these people you're playing with? So uh, our team is, name is called the Neighborhood. It is coed. So it's your neighborhood. I'm taking it by the name. There's like six of my neighbors are on this team, and okay. then there's others. But so last Tuesday was the first game. I uh-huh. was into Hatchby, so I couldn't attend. Uh, there was one concussion, and there was two pulled hamstrings. What? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> on the same person. Is this a 40 oh, and over person. league? Wait, this person pulled both hamstrings and got a concussion? No, no. So the person that uh, got the concussion was a girl. Oh, okay. And, uh, she took a per- ball to the head? Yes. Oh. Uh, the game was like at 6 o'clock in the evening, so sunset, mm-hmm. and was going to catch a fly ball, and sun got in their eyes and just hit her in the head. I see. Oh. And that was enough for concussion. There's and jokes in here, I'm sure. The, the, all, all over. The, the, the hamstring <laughs> was... Uh, I think similar thing. The guy was playing outfield and was sprinting to to catch the ball and yeah. just pulled them both. At, and did he just drop to his knees? I don't know. I wasn't there. Did they stretch him away? I don't know. Oh my god! This but amazing. the thing is, is, the guy's a cyclist. <laughs> like he rides his bike like hundreds of miles that's like every yeah, week. Yeah, that's not running. Yeah, and it's cycling way different. You have to specifically exercise your hamstring if you're like a hardcore cyclist. So maybe that was his problem. But to me, I was like, oh holy shit! What am I in for? And the, the funny thing is, is like... You've joined like the full contact league, apparently. Yeah, in, in the age range, is, there's there's a fair number of, of people in their 20s. And then, like, because so, so, like, one of them is, is my neighbor, uh, Dave, and his two sons, uh-huh. uh, Matt and Daniel. And so uh, Daniel's the youngest, and I think he's 23. Uh-huh. And so that's... And then some of them are, are Daniel and Matt's friends. So they're in their mid to late 20s. And the rest of them are like dads like me. So uh, my neighbor Nick is playing. He's, I think, 44. Uh-huh. I'm 43. Rob, I think, was, I think he's right around like early 40s as well. And so it's it's just kind of interesting to see how this is going to go. I've never done ad- adult rec league uh, softball. I've done like Did the, you go to the batting? Have you been in the batting cages recently? You should go. Well, well, get get practice. Last time I went to the batting cages was Santa Barbara. At, yeah, Santa Barbara at yeah. East Bay Tacos or East Beach Tacos. Um, but yeah, so I'm kind of curious to see how this goes. But I know like one of the companies I worked for in the past, they used to do softball at company picnics, and they had to stop doing it because, because it was creating aggressive. so many workmen's comp claims. Right. Because people were breaking bones. Jesus. Playing because they get <laughs> overly they get way too competitive. Overly competitive. And that's where I'm kind of curious to see how this goes. Uh, I think our team lost. Like it wasn't a close game. But yeah. these games are only an hour. Yeah. That yeah, sounds about right. right. Yeah. 50 so, minutes to an hour. Yeah. And so the games are like at 6, 7, 15, 8, 15, and 9, 15 or something uh-huh. like that. It's kind of how they, they yeah, stagger. Yeah. So this Tuesday will be my, my first game, and we're playing at 9, 9.15 or whatever at night. Well, if you need a referral to a sports Cairo, I got one for you. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping you say, if you need a stand-in, I got a glove. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely not. Well, I was going to offer that, but your team sounds far too aggressive for yeah. me. So. I don't – but it was the very first game, and for some of these people, it might have been their first game playing softball. So it's like – I, I don't know. So oh, no. That's my dilemma because I I used to have cleats and I wore cleats to the yeah. first practice for the work thing. Yeah. They separated, right? They were clapping at me. Oh, okay. okay. Nice. So I'm like, okay, I need to go get new cleats. But now I don't play softball anymore. Whereas when I bought those, I still played weekly and yeah. now I don't. So I'm like, do I spend the money on cleats or do I get turf shoes? What's the work obligation? Is this it practice once a week? Deep, once a week game? up until the tournament, which is September 8th and 9th. So uh, what 9th day a week are you practicing? Well, this past week it was Wednesday. Okay. And somewhere in Irvine or something? Yeah, it was or? in Irvine, yeah. All right. I, I, yeah, no. but I, yeah, so this is a Tuesday night thing. Yeah. And it's it's in the, actually a nearby city, like at their sports park. So my shoulders like, tweet, so I couldn't even play. So that's the thing. I can't throw very well anymore. That's fine. I threw my, my shoulder out yeah. a long time ago. I have to pay really close attention to like how I throw. Yeah. Otherwise, it just it, it hurts really, really bad. Yeah. And so for me, I'm just like, well, you know, I, I go to the gym Monday through Friday in the morning. You know, yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll see what this is like 
in the evening, but I have sure. no idea what I'm in for. It sounds, it sounds like, like you're in for a lot of fun. Yeah, death. Yeah. 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 Immediately death. Concussion, muscle strain. Uh -huh. Yeah. Have but you considered you hockey? Do. It sounds safe. <laughs> Right, dude. My neighborhood. There's a fair number of, of guys that actually play in an ice hockey league, like in Irvine at yeah. the uh, at oh, the Great man. Park. It's I fun. Wanna, I want to start playing yeah. so bad. I just got rid of. I finally got rid of all of my old hockey gear. That's that's a crying shame. Do you sell it on Facebook Marketplace? No, I didn't. I gave it away uh, because I opened the bag and immediately regretted it because you didn't wash anything. Oh, dude, I I never wash my my sweaters. Yeah, ever. I just throw them that's, away. These were not my yeah. white one was yellow. The girdle that I had was originally white at some point. Uh, it was oh. not anymore. But I I also had like really old mission skates and stuff that just like yeah. There's that's, no they're not worth keeping. That's so, the thing. If I was going to do it, mm -hmm. I need new skates, yeah. I need new shins, new gloves. I'm like yeah. I'm a thousand dollars away from even being able to step onto a rink again. Yep. The only so. thing I still kept, I kept my sticks because those are like 120 bucks a piece or something like that. Yeah, they're yeah. expensive, and they make good home defense tools. Yeah, oh, they're I hanging think. in the rafters. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good spot for them. No, no. no Mine are strategically have... placed throughout the house. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. I uh, so much, seriously though, if you do need a, a good Cairo guy, I've got one. So I started going to because I've had back problems like yeah, forever. you mentioned it last time. Yeah, yeah, but I started going to sports guys. Yeah. So I went yesterday and he did all like just deep tissue work. Yeah, and he even got that little scrapey thing oh, out. The, the magic butter. That thing hurts, dude. Yeah. My, all of it hurts. My, my whole like my legs are all bruised. The dude's brutal. My 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 guy uses that too. And yeah, the magic butter knife is miraculous. I mean, but it, it hurts when you do when he's doing oh, it. Oh, totally. Yeah, because he, he's he's breaking muscle fibers, but he's also bringing blood to the to the areas to then kind of revitalize the tissue, and it works. But yeah, you get some nasty bruises. Oh and yeah. Stuff because like, of it. Yesterday he did like so. I've been ha like my hips have been bugging me a little bit. My back. So he did all like basically thigh work i guess but okay. all that like super super deep tissue massage stuff yeah use the thing on my hamstrings uh -huh. and then did uh like basically open my hip joints with these like some strap and then uh, adjustments yeah. oh dude it it hurts but you like you feel taller today i'm super yeah. sore yeah. yeah i'm really sore but it is worth every penny and i have an hsa so whatever it's basically free, free. right now perfect you've already yeah. paid for it. yeah my, if you do need the guys down the street my buddy pulls out like he's got like a toolbox and he's got different Magic butter knife yeah. blades, like curvature oh, yeah, yeah. and stuff. It's a fascinating thing because it looks. But he's at your gym, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of the same idea of your your guy, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy actually he travels with the U.S. fencing team. Oh. Like he's their guy, but he's a. And some days it's like so. Some days it's just that. Other days it's more like adjustments. And then other times I've gone, he makes you do like like PT, like weight work and stuff. So there you go. it. Well, I mean it's. Definitely helped. Yeah, it makes makes everything that little bit better every time, which is yeah. Good. Those those times when you walk out of like a chiropractor's office and you feel so much taller, or you just feel looser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, you're I, all excited about it, and like two to three days later, you're back to look. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, ah. I miss going to my chiropractor. Well, you need to go. I'm glad to see you didn't get rid of the bicycle, though. No, I There's need to be. Chance. Yeah, no, I, it needs no. to be fixed. Yep, that's fine. And refit, and I just it's fine. Wait, your street it. bike? My His road bike. Uh, yeah, road yeah, bike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the last time I rode it, it had an off on it, and Ooh. I think it was the last time. And so it's all just tweaked. It yeah. just and it needs it needs new tires, needs new tubes, needs a tune up. The rear derailleur is funky. That's all. Might I mean, bent. it's old. I don't yeah. think it's bent. No. I think it's just it never it was never adjusted right. Um, I just couldn't get it like exactly where I need it to be. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'd like to ride that bike. It's not a cheap bike. It's a fun I'd, bike. I'd like to ride with you oh no you wouldn't oh yeah you would you'd be too fast he wants nope. to get a tandem a ta dude go. i would do that we could do that we could get tandem that would be the best day of my life <laughs> and have you, you ridden a tandem no they are miserable i my uh we used to have one when i was a kid a big yellow beach cruiser tandem and my my cousin and i would ride on it all the time and you guys ever bunny hop it at the same time no no but he would get pissed because i would just stop pedaling yeah yeah and then it sucks because if you're in the back you don't have any control over where you're going. Right. Nope. And so we used to live by a cemetery and he would like force us to ride through there. And you know, when you're a kid, you got <laughs> yeah, like weird phobias. Yeah. 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 I was like, no, no, no. And I'd like yeah. freak out. I might've jumped off it at one point. Oh, like, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> but I remember that we had that thing for years. I don't even, I mean, my mom got it for whatever, but hmm. that was, that thing was fun. 
They are ridiculous. I have never ridden a tandem bike. Really? No. It seems interesting. Like the beach cruiser idea seems interesting. Yeah. As a as a road bike, it's like one. I got to be wearing spandex. Two. It's like a tandem, so it's like eh. You don't have to wear spandex. To complete the look properly, I think you do. No. No. I ride with a guy that wears a t-shirt, and yeah. I mean, he wears a bib, you know, shorts, but he wears a t-shirt. He doesn't wear a jersey. And he's got chafy nipples. He might. <laughs> yeah, he might. That might be his problem. Depends yeah. on if the bib covers his nipples or not. There you but, go. You know. Yeah, I, I have all my cycling gear. I don't think any of it fits. Oh, the other thing, I need new cleats for my shoes. It's just, you See, know. you're about a thousand bucks away, too. I know. That's what sucks. Everything's yeah. freaking expensive. A thousand bucks. Yeah, Everything. Just, just cleats, or the, the, the turf uh, spikes on a glove was just over a hundred bucks. And I went... A hundred bucks. That's yeah. super cheap. That's super cheap. But that, that was intentionally because I'm like... This is just adult rec league softball. If I like this, maybe I'll get better gear. But it's like the I, only thing that I, I have think, a great weird. baseball mid, but it's like it's too small for softball. So it was like, eh. I was gonna say, the only thing I wouldn't cheap out on is a glove because that's a thing you can like a nice glove you, you'll have forever. Yeah, yeah, and you physically touch it. Yeah. The cheap ones gonna come off on your hands. Where'd you get your turf shoes? Uh, they're Adidas. Uh, I got them online just because they were on sale. Because I, I checked like Dicks and I checked a bunch of different places, and so there was. The cheapest I could find them, and I think it was like forty something, just under fifty bucks on, on the, the Amazon. Amazon. Big five. Uh, I don't. It might have been on the Amazon. Yeah, I can't remember. I had not been in a big five in a long time, and I went recently. Man, those places suck. Yeah, but they're weird. They are. It's, I don't remember them being that weird. Big five has always been the Marshalls but or I TJ Maxx of sporting that. goods. It is. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. It is. I worked there when I was uh, yeah in, in high school. Yeah, that really? is a place to work. Oh, and the, yeah, I and the funny thing that. I think that that's funny is the fact that it they still require the employees, like the guys, to wear like a dress shirt and yep. tie, tie, yep, to sling like yeah. discounted, discounted shoes. Sporting. And sporting we went in stuff. looking for I went in looking for a hat, like a ball cap, like yeah. baseball. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I went so I'd gone to. I think we were on our way to the Angel game or something like that. Needed a hat, mm. not for me, but went to grab an Angels hat and they didn't have like anything. Ended up going to. I had to go to uh, Target's got a decent that other place. sports, but Dick's. Dick's. Dick's I went to Dick's. Dick's. Yeah, I See, usually buy mine online. I was at Dick's today, and I needed to try on shoes. They had various, you yeah. know, yeah. cleats that I wanted to try yeah. on. They're like, "Oh no, we only have that online." What good? Then why does is it, it in do the me? store? Yeah, exactly. What oh no, we only have size fourteen in that shoe in the store. Everything else is online. Okay, great. Sorry, not a size 14. So, uh, <laughs> what do I do? I need to know if that shoe fits me. That's super weird. So annoying. I can't, huh. I, I'm like, we are in this weird. Like, What's another sporting goods store you could go to? Sports Chalet went away. No, they're no. gone. So it's, it's gone. So yeah. it, it's, it's, it's Dick's. Dicks. Yeah. Sports, Sports Authority doesn't exist. Nope. They're yeah. gone too. That's so, so weird. Yeah. yeah. Sporting goods were, was a major like brick and mortar thing. Yeah. And then Sports Chalet all, was a rad store. Yeah. Oh, you can go to Monkey Sports. Uh, yeah. They do everything. Oh, they're, they have a baseball they're store. Baseball, baseball, softball, hockey. hockey yeah. Lacrosse. Yeah. They used to just be hockey, and they were great. There's yeah. a spot that I've seen. That's where I bought my skates. In Fountain my Valley, uh, right? The Old Fries is now a sports basement. What is that about? I don't know. But Sport, it's a, isn't sports basement used? It's used in it rental from what I could find out on the internet, okay. but I couldn't. I still am like super it's confused. it's a huge location. Huge you could get warehouse. somebody else's shoes. Maybe I should put the snowboard deck there. <gasps> And I could rent it out to people <laughs> while this guy is. Well, guys, no, because yes. it'll be it'll be on a mountain and he'll want it. Right? Yeah, the probably. second you drop it off. But then I'll tell him I'm going to Hawaii. Yeah, sorry, man. I'll get back. <laughs> I'll you get right back. back. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, uh, man, I don't know. Use sporting goods is kind of gross. They say shop it is. and rent. Well, so I guess they. I don't. It's bizarre. Yeah, well, use sporting equipment. Gross. If you look in your hockey bag. Yeah. Would you disgusting. rent a? a pair of uh hockey pants i wouldn't rent a pair of hockey anything no no not a chance there was a guy that i played with in the bay area that wanted to play really bad had no gear they had couldn't necessarily product. afford it i was like okay we'll go up to <laughs> hockey export which is a place in um oakland that i used to go to he's like all right cool so we go up there's like, oh, i don't know it's all kind of expensive and he like gets a text from one of his buddies like, oh my friend's gonna give me all his gear and i was like and you're gonna use it yeah are you gonna sell it then to make money to go yeah, buy I was new really stuff confused, or what? no sure enough he showed up like he was rocking somebody else's gloves oh oh dude it was so disgusting i was like did you smell those yeah like, no I'm like, oh. yeah that's the only thing i did keep was my gloves just because i 
have a sentimental you can host ta- attachment to them. Birthday parties there? Yeah, I saw that too. I'm sorry, what? At it's the really, sports basement. I'm, yeah. I'm reading their website. It's like, who the heck is sports basement? Okay, we're a store, but let's not let that label define us. What? We're your outdoor obsessed neighbors with a closet full of your favorite brands and a passion for helping you have the most fun possible. They so they've got gear, apparel, rentals in all sorts of categories, bike and snow shops, lots of couches, and plenty of space for you to ho- host your next birthday party. What? Not so you can, like hang out. Yeah. Why? And is this a these... new sponsor opportunity here? Wait, where is this place? It's the Fries, Fries. in Fountain Valley. The it's old Fries. Oh, yeah. 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 That... I'll have to, I, I go there three days a week. I should check it out. It's huge. Weird. I mean, I don't go to the sports basement. Yeah. But I go in that <laughs> right. area. Right. Yeah. Right. So the basically free bike tune, if you go get a bike tune, you'll get $125, which is what the bike tune costs uh-huh. in store credit. There is, that's your ticket. Absolutely. Let's get no. that so bike you, up and there's running. There's no way I'm taking yes. it to sports basement. It's so better f- than leaving it where it's at. So it gets no, fixed for 125 bucks, and then you get to use 125 bucks as credit in the store. Hey, that's that's, that's, that's a fine. brilliant idea. Sponsors. No. Uh, we do need sponsors on this, but hopefully beer companies. So here's the deal. Brewery X. Yes, that'd be fantastic. Dude, okay. Speaking of, you and go, I'll circle back to your pizza question, and I've said this a million times. I'll say it again. They are the best pepperoni pizza in Orange County, full stop. They're pretty full stop. damn up there. Full stop. They're know, so that was good. a pretty deep sigh. Yeah, he does not agree. Kind of well, no, because okay. I was just trying to think of anything that might be better. I, I, I'm I, a big fan of OG's, but the thing about uh, so OG's is thicker crust, whereas the Brewery X and OG's is, is also crust. closed around here. No, there's one off of Alicia. In yeah, well, that's Yale. way down there. Well, I'm saying you. like over here, the one that's there, it's been oh, sitting yeah, yeah, empty yeah. for like five yes, years. Yes, weird. Yeah, six so years. Weird when it's super bizarre. That. I don't understand. But I, I would agree. Uh, Brewery X has really good pizza they're chicken strips and fries. I've never had chicken strips and fries. So the burgers good. are good. I've never had a burger. Burgers there. are good. Um, they also have a uh, chef's chopped salad. That uh, yes, is that is really phenomenal. good. Phenomenal. Yes. And, oh, by the way, did did you know they also have really good beer? Never heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. Weird. Super weird. I was wearing a Brewery X shirt the other day that's uh, it's like a light blue, not light blue, like a angel's color blue, mm-hmm. and it's got an X with a halo on it, and it says, I can't remember what's on the back, but somebody was like, oh, Where'd you get that shirt? Is that a, a new Angel shirt? It literally says Brewery X on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brewery. I've never heard of it. Oh, okay. Do you? Um, so speaking of which, I uh, I picked up a six pack last night mm-hmm. of the Very Hoppy Caterpillar. Which, All of their great uh, book. It is a great book. All of their like where the wild things are. Yep. The theme. So stuff, West Coast the series, right? Yeah, yeah. Super, super good. I, so that's the first one I've had. I haven't had the other ones. I I might have a can of the. I can't remember exactly what it's called off the top of my head, but it's a where the wild things are one. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Where did you go? Where I, do you have like a what a store Bethnal. down by? Uh, yeah. So well, then on your way home, you should stop at Bradley's. Oh, yeah, off of uh, Tustin. Mm -hmm. Yep, Tustin and Irvine. Either Bradley's or head over to uh, Red Hill. Um, So if you go down Chapman to Prospect on the right, it's the same parking lot where um, PCH Dogs is. Yes. Is that place good? Dude, which place? PCH PCH Dogs? Dogs. Yes. I wonder how many people are going to look up these locations and addresses and try to figure out where the hell we're talking about. Depends on where your listeners are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or they're going to weirdly triangulate and just show up outside my house like groupies. I could. That'd be fine. Eh. No, it would not. Do you be upload fine. the episodes from your house, from your IP Absolutely address? Absolutely not. No, Using a no. VPN? I use a VPN Attaboy. from China. Yeah. Oh boy. China. Is that how you run your OnlyFans, too? Yeah, 100%. I, I'm the one that's uploading. Yeah. Yeah. Only cans. Yeah. Have you seen that one? No. Only cans? I have. Yeah, seen that's it. a good one. It's actually, it, it's okay. It, it was all right. I had to buy it when I saw it because I thought it was Absolutely. hilarious. Um, so, anyways, yeah, Red Hill Liquor, they, they've got a pretty good selection, and that's actually where I picked up the last two Brewery X releases. Okay. So, got those there. Um, but yeah, the very hobby caterpillar is fantastic. Do you know where Brewery X like started, got their funding? I, I have just no feel idea. Like they just blew up out of nowhere. They've always been in that location, which is weird too. Well, at least I, I've never known them in a different location and that place is massive. It it's started huge. huge. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, um, I can't, do they still have the back, the back parking lot still all outdoor stuff too. All I mean, outdoor. That place is massive. The only yep. thing that sucks is there's nowhere to park now. No, there's nowhere to which park. Which blows. You got to park down the street. Yeah, or get there early. Or get there early. Yeah. yeah. But man, their pizza is so freaking good. It is. 
It is. I love it. Yep. They, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, their sponsorship with the ducks their sponsorship with the angels. It's their we sat, yeah, we had the, just, we got tickets and sat in the brewery X restaurant at the last yeah, yeah, angels yeah. game we yeah. went to. Yeah. And we were on the front and the rail. It was great. Yeah. And it's not, the tickets are actually relatively affordable for where you're sitting. I mean, they're good seats. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was the, uh, the not hole club. Yeah, right. exactly. Yep. So yep. yeah, you had the, yep. you had the full service. You can sit at the seat and yep. people would bring you food and drink. And now it's the only thing that's stupid that I don't like is that you QR code into a menu, oh. but you have to close out every single time. Uh, that's weird. so every, yeah. Like instead of like, I'm sitting here in this thing in yeah. the restaurant, it should be more like restaurant yeah. and, you know, run a tab, but they don't let you do it. That's Which is how, a bummer. That's how Great Notion Brewing was the last time I was there. Yeah. You QR coded everything and everything was a separate so charge. So stupid. So weird. There was, uh, who else was doing that during the pandemic? Uh, There's a brewery exit, Ontario Airport. Yeah, that's the yeah. other thing. They're opening up more locations yeah. now. Yeah. Which is, I'm I'm all for it. I don't know. But I you, mean. You look at the craft breweries that have expanded locations, not many of them have lasted. Like they grow too big Well, or too they quick. get bought. Or they get bought. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, speaking of getting bought, it's, uh, I can't believe that, I, mean, I uh, whatever. Uh, Anchor Steam. Oh, RIP. Dude. Owned by, so they get bought by Sapporo. And then it just tanked. 137 years. Yeah. And they're just like, nah, we're good. But now it looks like the employees are trying to get funding. So there, there was a uh, another company tried to buy it once already, and they said no. Um, and then I think the employee, yeah, the employees are trying to get money together to buy it. But yeah. It, it's iffy whether or not that'll work. I saw on their Instagram the other day, it was like the last day of their tasting room. Yeah. It's just sad. And, and the line was like miles, yeah. basically. It was just huge. And they had to turn people away after a certain point just because it was a huge outpouring of, of people. I am glad that like Russian River is a great example, right? They're big enough now that you can get Blind Pig and mm-hmm. Pliny pretty much all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for that. Yep. I'm okay. Yep. It makes Pliny a little less desirable yeah. like i like happy hops better to be honest with you i haven't had happy Hops. oh it's awesome happy hops is great um blind pig is really good blind pig's great yeah yeah um but it's you know it's a thing where like pliny is kind of eh, it's it's just around which and it's a good beer but it was better when it was harder to get that being said i am happy that russian river is easier to get now yeah i agree the distribution of russian river has has definitely improved right. and, and you know i i agree with that i mean there are certainly quite a few beers from up north that i miss not being able to get down here sure. for, you know um but but um it, it just it, brewery x in, in particular to me it kind of just blows me away how big they are when yeah. it kind of came out of nowhere, yeah. you know, and just blew up. I don't even know who started with. That's what I'm wondering where yeah. the funding yeah, has come sure. from. And but like, well, I mean, Green Cheek's doing pretty good. Yeah, Green Cheek's yeah. doing well. I mean, they got yeah. two locations. And they got two now. locations, yep. and one of them certainly not cheap. Being down there at the uh, Pacific, don't they have one at the Pacific uh, off of PCH? There, don't they have a Green Cheek there? Do they? Uh, I Pacific, know that they've got the one in Costa Mesa. They have the one in Costa Mesa. Yeah. Oh, obviously the one right here. That's they started right here. Oh, maybe those are the two. Yeah, I thought yeah. They had one are you, th- you think you rip? Rip what? is down there. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it of. might be. But Green Cheek, no, Green Cheek is the old. Um, oh shit! What did they buy? They're across the street from Gunwale. Yes, and it used to be. I forget every time. Not modern times. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, no. we went to Villains. Yeah, how was that? Worthless. No. Okay, so they. I found out they're owned by the same company that owns Smoke and Fire. It's Smoke and Fire. So Craft by Smoke, Smoke and Fire. And fire. Craft by Smoke and Fire is a restaurant in um, uh, Anaheim. Okay. It gets massively good reviews. We went horrible service. It was awful. The food wasn't very good. The pastrami was the best thing we ate. It was just, and they just slammed down a plate of pastrami. It was bizarre. It was like a regular restaurant, but then we also do barbecue. It was, it was, a, it was strange. And what's crazy about it is all the reviews are good. So I was like, this is bizarre. But we, um, they had a couple beers on taps, and it was before Villains opened. It was Villains Brewing stuff. Mm-hmm. So then I find out later that they own it. We ended up stopping in. Mediocre service, mediocre food. The beers are not good. Uh, the What I found weird, too, is like the Villains theming was pretty poorly done. It's like a couple murals, hmm. and everything's painted like black. And then all the tap handles are pirates and skeletons and stuff so i guess that's villains i suppose so i'm wondering if that's a licensing thing potentially probably couldn't afford even it. so it's well no because there's like a mural with jason 
Like, so there's, there are some stuff, like Mm. some things in that sense, but it, um, it just felt really cheesy and like really poorly thought through. And Mm. then like the beers. So you would think if your brewery is a villain themed brewery, you would name your beers villain theming. Sure. No, no, not even, not even at all. Is that like copyright thing? I mean, you can't name it after like known, but you could be like, mommy, the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like the bad guy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, because I mean, you associate it with with like, yeah. But I mean, my properties. point, they, like, it's like they didn't even try. The theming is just like, yeah, it'll just be for the paintings and the, the building. The outdoor space looked cool, though. It's a bunch. It is cool, but the trees that hang over just rain shit down the whole uh, time. They literally like we had to get coasters and put them over our drinks. Oh, really? And there was like constantly trees falling in your food. Like the food was okay. That's a bummer. Um, that was just a bummer, and yeah, and they've covered the pool, so like they had it's a pool. Yeah, because it used to be, it was, um, was it Modern Times? Oh, I never went to that Modern yeah, Times. Yeah, they had a pool, and you could go in the pool. But now really? the, the pool's covered, but there's still water in it. Hmm. So I guess they can uncover it. And, it's bizarre. Maybe for events or something. I guess, man. It was just, and then there's a line that was, yeah. it, eh, it was skippable. Okay. Yeah, you're okay. better off going to Brewery X. Okay. As, as in most cases. There's a uh, brewery cycling ride every month that uh-huh. I'm going to get you out on. Mm. Sounds unlikely, but maybe. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll see, see, like, the beer mile. It's it's you, a... You run a mile, and every lap you have to finish your you, beer. You what, you a do. mile? You run a mile. Well, I'm uh-huh. not getting past one yeah, beer that like, way. What? <laughs> but it's, it's on the track, so I oh, don't so know if you... A I couple don't laps. You, yeah, so it's four laps. I don't know if you start with a beer, but... You run a lap, you have to drink a beer, and you have you have to finish the beer before you can continue the, the second lap, and then the third, and the fourth. Oh, so, so run like an hour mile. No. Like, the record is, like, literally, like, under six minutes. I'm saying you could, ridiculous. though. Oh, yeah, you yeah, could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> if I have to wait for me. Yeah, I could just leisurely drink a beer. Yeah. That's fine. I just walk. Yeah. yeah. No That's big exactly. deal. I'd be on an outdoor walk with four beers. That's what I just <laughs> did. That's like a neighborhood stroll. Yeah. yeah That's just a normal yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Pretty uh, much. But so back to, you were asking me a question earlier about fire extinguishers. and Oh, yes. So element fire extinguishers, I think it's it's weird you're having a problem getting them. What were you trying to order them? Amazon. Okay. Yeah, they wouldn't ship to California. Order them direct. I, I don't know what the deal is with that. I ordered them direct and then um, ended up getting, so there's a company called Desert Does It. Okay. And they make these things, they call them seat jackers. And they basically are blocks that the front of your seat sits on. Mm-hmm. So the Forerunner seats are probably only slightly less comfortable than your Jeep, I would imagine. This guy. Um, but the, so what they do basically is tilt the seat. Okay. So you get a little bit more support. And they're actually, it's nice. I'm trying, I'm having to reposition the seat and figure out how it should go again. But they're just elevated enough. I mean, there may be an inch and a half. So it's not that big of a deal. But they have in the front of those, there's two holes tapped on either side. So you can run basically like an accessory panel oh, across. Very nice. So I put an accessory panel in front of the passenger seat and then um, bought. So I had to go to Ace yesterday. I made two trips to Ace and one, one trip to Home Depot to get all the hardware I needed to put it all together. So I used those rubber straps, you know, where they're like the tooth. Yep. That That's flips what over. Yep. They're a little like, they're difficult to get done, but once they're done, they're fine. They're they come nice. off really yeah. easy. So I used two of those bolted those to the strap and I have one extinguisher there. And then the other ones in the back. You were uh, joking that like no home improvement project is done with at least three trips. Yeah. And that's what it ended up being yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause there's always the first trip where you don't get what you need. Then you go back for the second trip. And then the third trip is usually just to return the stuff that you didn't need after all. This was, I went to, so I went to uh, Ace, bought a bunch of stuff, and then realized, oh, I actually want to put washers on the front. I happened to be near Home Depot, so stopped at Home Depot, but they don't really carry, first, they don't have black washers, and they don't do a lot of, like, machine-type stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, Home Depot does what Home Depot does, which is fine. So then I went back to Ace and got the rest of the washers that I needed, and they came home, and it was like a... I don't know, five minute project to put there it all together. Yeah, if you need specialty nuts, bolts, washers, anything, Ace is the place. That's what they say in their ass. With the helpful hardware folks. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever go when you were important? Did you ever go to Rose? Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah. That place, the fastener section at this place, Matthew, was like five aisles. Yeah. It's like when make Master Car. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. It had everything you could ever want. Or everything. Make- McMaster Car is obviously an online catalog. Mm-hmm. There's a place in Santa Ana called McFadden Dale. Yeah, McFadden Dale's awesome, it's but it's expensive. 
but you're paying you're for the paying for the and the ability to access yeah. stuff that's super rare that's yeah. true but it is expensive yeah but anyway so yeah they um, had a rose in vancouver yeah yeah they did if you wanted to go over the river to van tucky well or you lived there or, or you lived there yeah. i would go over there all the time yeah so just for but that. he wouldn't live there no. i lived there when i first moved up there i lived in oh in, that's right yeah, you did. i was yeah. in vancouver you did, for, you did test it out like i think i made it six months if that mm. and i was like i'm i'm done okay bye bye like I even was, I talked to my landlord. I was like, "Hey, you know, I need to get out of my lease because this place sucks." It was it cheap wasn't though. That bad. Why, that why didn't you like it? They have nothing. Yeah, it's a lot. That's better like Portland, now. though. No, oh, no, Portland's built up, but no, Vancouver but like as far, you want like a better. cool bar, you want a cool like restaurant. You're you always want, going into Portland, yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah. but not anymore. Vancouver is way better. I did like the bowling. There's that giant bowling alley in Vancouver on the east side of mm-hmm. Vancouver. It's yep. pretty cool. Yep. I can't remember what that was called. But they built up the whole waterfront now. They have trapdoor brewing. They built up the waterfront because people always go to Portland. Yeah, it's true. I'd rather just go to Portland. Not anymore. Portland's dead now. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Well, that's I was just there not too long ago. I go to Chicago tomorrow. Chicago is... She just came back from Chicago. Chicago is freaking awesome. That's one of my favorite cities. And Ryan loves to go there by train. So if you (laughs) had the chance, (laughs) take the train. How how long are you going to be out there for? Till Friday. What part? Chicago. So fly Monday. You know, downtown. Huh? Downtown. That's a very large part of Chicago. Meet Staying Tuesday through Lowe's. Wednesday, Thursday, and then fly home Friday. Meetings start tomorrow at four thirty. Oh, oh wow! And uh, they don't end until Thursday night. Jeez. That sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, Chicago's great. Um, Looking forward to pizza. Uh, okay. All right. I mean, I've only had it once, so yeah, it's, it's not okay. like I get it a lot. Yeah. So yeah. I figured, yeah. You know, but there is. Do you go walk around by the waterfront? You try to do walk down the river. You're gonna go to no. There is zero time for anything. Like, like, literally Navy every beer? single night has a dinner, and then there's after hours. Literally on the schedule it says after hours. So after dinner, after hours. Just say you're they can't tired. force you to do yeah. that. Oh, tell you what, man, that's lame. Do you want me to write you a note? Yes, please. Yeah. All right. Please must excuse look at, Nick. Yeah, he must ate a check. pickle and has explosive <laughs> diarrhea. Right. <laughs> Dude, there's one of my one of the best old fashions I've ever had was at a restaurant in Chicago, and it was made with like they did the simple syrup with um, uh, English. What's that English tea? That was that stuff English called? breakfast tea. No, no, no. Earl Grey. Earl, Earl Grey. Grey. Okay. Oh man, it was so good. Yeah. I've been like chasing this this old fashioned for years now. I gotta figure out a way to make their simple syrup. Just make them at home. Hmm. So good. Interesting. There's a ton of good food in Chicago. Yeah. I've you get to have Portillo's? some of it. Uh, uh, I've had it before, but no. You're lucky. You, know what you need to do. It. The don't Cubs have... are on the road, so you're not missing anything. Oh, okay. That's well. Good. Even if they were there, you're not missing anything. No, but yeah, but to go to Wrigley, like I've always. Have you never to been to Wrigley? Wrigley? No. Oh, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, like. Okay. Man, yeah. If you guys saw this schedule, this itinerary, you'd be like, oh, man, that's not going to be a whole lot of fun. But you know, you'll get through it. Uh, are you? Actively participating in this event, or are you attending? No, actively participating. So you're putting on stuff, or you're you're saying and doing stuff. Yep. Fun, fun. Yep. It's gonna be a ball. <laughs> well, looking it. forward to it. Yep. That's uh, that's what I have coming up this week. Nice. So, are you gonna yeah. get a chocolate shake? Uh, because it's different there. Is I'm. Uh, Is there? Do are they known for their chocolate shakes? Not that I know of. I'm spending this last week of summer getting ready for Grayson to go back to school. So, like, this Wednesday he has his orientation makeup day because he missed last week's because he was at camp. And, and what grade is he going into? He's going into eighth grade. Eighth grade, okay. To, to answer your question, uh, in Chicago, you got to go to, what's it called, Wiener? Schnitzel? It's, oh. No, no it's, no, it's so a, good. It's, uh, it's a place it's called. It's a hot dog place, but yeah. Yeah, uh, Wiener Circle. Yeah. Okay. It is, like, one of the best hot dogs there, but they're, tro- they're known for their chocolate shakes. Okay. So I'll, you go uh, there, I'll go to the window, to fit order that a chocolate shake. All right. So Grayson's going into third, uh, third Going grade. into eighth grade. Jesus. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it goes by that fast, though. I mean, it, Dude, it's, it's, nuts. It, it's interesting. This is his last year, basically, before he starts high school the following fall. So he's more or less ready with like back to school shopping and stuff, but we still need to pick up a, a pair of uh, gym shoes. Because he likes to wear like skateboarding shoes and stuff, which kind of suck to run a mile in. Yeah. So we just buy cheap 
running shoes and just throw them in the PE locker. And so he's always got those. Right. So we still get that. And then he wants to school shopping. I remember yeah. that was like so much fun. I didn't like it as a kid, but like by the time like junior high and high school came around, it, yeah, it started yeah. to become fun. You're yeah. Like p- figuring out your style and stuff. Um, so Grayson's now uh, searching the major minor league baseball, looking for some new hats okay. for the school year. And then, uh, yeah, we just got a couple of minor things. Like when I went out to Cabazon to see the, the Pee Wee dinosaur, I stopped by the outlets and uh, stance. I, for, I always forget that's out there. Yeah. yeah. They're actually pretty good outlets compared to like some of the local stuff just because like we have outlets closer. Yeah. But that one's larger, has more stores. Right. And so even though it's ungodly hot, there's more things to look at. So they had a stance outlet out there and it was buy four, get four free. Wow. Oh, damn. So any four items, you would get four items of yeah, lower price. Sure. So I got four pairs of socks for me, and Grayson got four pairs of socks, and it was like forty something, like forty eight bucks. Yeah, their stuff's Jeez. not cheap. No, but it's like. But I mean, when you get that, you know, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, that's yeah, a great. Eight deal. pairs of socks for yeah. under fifty bucks. That was a good deal. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> that's, that's so sad. You're Which is about weird socks. because you're looking at yeah the white socks as a kid, you'd get the twelve pack for like ten bucks. Yeah. I mean, I still buy those. That's fine. <laughs> you know? I actually like the Bomba socks or Bombas or whatever they are. Those are, are, those are expensive as heck. Yeah, and those are just simple, simple yeah. color. Yeah. yeah, I went to buy some of those recently because I needed some new socks. I don't. I got rid of I think every single pair of like other than dress socks, but any type of pull up socks. I don't own. Think I own anymore. So I wear ankle socks to the gym, and then everything else everywhere. is a, is a crew sock. I wear ankle socks even with dress pants. Yeah. I just like the obnoxious patterns on the stand stuff, so it's just kind of fun. Yeah. So that's well, that's, I have a bunch of dress socks if I want to do that that are all funky. All right, there you go. Or a lot of Star Wars socks. Hmm. That you, killed the conversation. You, <laughs> yes, it did. Well, the sock conversation in general. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. This is like super exciting stuff. Uh, well, Aren't so, you a big sock guy? Uh, yeah, I See, am. There you go. I, I am. See. I will say, right. I'm mostly stance, and then I have some. Standard. I I do definitely standard crew. I don't yeah. do the ankle socks, so I'm a standard crew guy. Mm. But uh, the yeah. best of those is Grayson. For, for the most part, like he wears mostly ankle socks. But since he's been skateboarding so much, ankle socks with knee pad and then shorts. His leg has stripes on it. He has a stripe above his oh, knee. Oh yeah, from the, yeah. And right. he has a stripe like right above his ankle from like the only part that's exposed. Right. So that'll be fun to see him deal with that. Looks I like always have zebra. weird. I always have weird tans, like especially when I'm like if I'm out when I run a lot, oh, yeah, yeah. I get weird. You know, I have like it's like a ghosted sandal with a white foot, mm-hmm. and then like a weird you know hard spot around my ankle or my. It's basically like, I look like Neapolitan ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's different shades yeah. of Neapolitan depending yeah, yeah. on depending on where. Yep. Yeah, it's so funny. Yep. Yep, that's I'm just strawberry. I just turn red. Oh, geez. that's all I do. That's yeah. I get that, and I'm pasty white, and then the parts that color get dark pretty quickly. Yeah. Hmm. So Unless you just cover yourself in tattoos, then nobody knows. That's true. Yeah, I'm still working. I'm trying to figure out. I I want to get some ink work done, but it's like okay, where and like where on me do I want to get it done, and then like what? Like I have ideas, but it's like can Ryan to... and I choose where? <laughs> Maybe like, we get a say in this and the what? Maybe. I'll draw it. Yeah. So, yeah, just trying to figure it out. It's like, so veiny. Because basically uh, all, all, <laughs> all my ink is basically like on my – it's currently just on my triceps. Yeah. So it's like, okay, do I move to the front of the arm? And then it's like, okay, well, I wear – Do you just go straight for the neck? Well, no. Lips. I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but, I mean, like, I, I, I could do calves. I mean, yeah. I, I might be fine with that. But then it's just a question of, like, Jeanette has a – a squirrel uh, silhouette on her shoulder right. that's got a big uh, watercolor style tattoo of, mm. of floral arrangement. Right. And it's got an acorn in there. And so it's like, okay, well, do I get a nut to then correspond to her squirrel? So it's kind of like a couple's tattoo without really being a couple's tattoo. Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, I would have no problem getting her name inked on me and vice versa, but it just seems kind of just cliche. Mm. So it's like, ah. Uh, but having something that kind of relates her tattoos to my tattoos sure. would be interesting. I like it. Yeah. So then Jeanette, for some reason, she's looking at the, the couple tattoos where you get something like on your fingers or on yeah. your hands. So when you hold hands, the two different tattoos make sense because they yeah, yeah. do something. Like it's a line and then it makes a picture. Yeah. Sure. And I'm like, okay, those are interesting, but I don't know. Yeah. I'd go with the nut. Yeah. I just got to figure out. And then it kind of, you know, squirrel finds a nut every now and then, and she found you, right? Yep. Oh, See? Yep. It makes sense. But yeah. then where do I put the nut? 
<laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? On. I don't think the scrotum tattoo is very. No. That I mean, it sounds. I don't know. That horrifically sounds painful. painful. Yeah. yeah, it's not uh, not a thing for me. Or the or the dry razor <laughs> before. Oh. oh man. I think they want you to take care of it before you come in. In that case, <laughs> what if you put it on your shoulder where hers is, but on your body? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, we'll figure something out. But yeah. Then the other thing is like in and out. I know you would get an in and out tattoo. But not specifically in and out. But I was thinking, like, what if we both did one of the palm trees? Oh, you know, and they could they cross, X. Yeah, 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 there yeah, you yeah. Go. yeah. So right. then it's like that. And then instead of doing coconuts, I do little acorns on the palm tree. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, so then it's like that's yeah. a really fucked up palm tree. It is, yeah, but it's got weird. meaning to it. And I know. It, I, yeah, I get it. But at a glance, you wouldn't see that those nuts aren't coconuts. You know, you just right. so it's like okay, that could be interesting. But anyways, I realize it's been a couple of years since I've gotten a tattoo. I know. For a yeah. while, you were on a streak of traveling and getting some. Yeah, and I'm just kind of meh. The last thing I got, I think, it was a rune. Uh, yeah. So that would have been a couple years ago now. Yeah. Mm. Sad. Sadness. I call it Mark. Well, the other thing I got to figure out is like, because everything I have right now is just grayscale. It's yeah. all just, you know, tattoo black or green at this point. So it's like, okay, what do I want to do? I do color? Do I just keep with the monochromatic look and, you know, and just get the other piece I have touched up? Because it's been years. I mean, yeah. like, I got my first tattoo when I was 18, and the other one was like when I was in my 20s. So it's. But they've stayed out of the sun, so they look all right, but the edges could be sharpened up and stuff. So it's like, eh, we'll figure it all out. Yeah. It's, you just got to do it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend more money on uh, Mega Millions lottery tickets and win that billion and a half dollars. It was 1.3 the other day. Yeah. Did, it, now did nobody win? Nobody won. So it's going this Tuesday for like $1.55 billion, And that was as of Saturday morning. I won a whopping $0. I won. I don't great. play. I won uh, 8 bucks. No. Oh. So. So you recovered I spent 80%. forty. I spent, oh, spent forty, 40. Okay. and recovered eight. Yeah. So that's twenty percent. Yeah. yeah, something Whatever. like that. It's yeah. worth don't the play. entertainment value. Why you don't do it? No. Why not? Ten uh, bucks. Yeah. What's What's the worst thing that happens? Nothing. He, he, get, he wins oh, a bunch true. of. <laughs> yeah, that's a beer. It is, uh, now, not for much longer. I feel like sure. beers. You know what the other thing about beers? So there was, I was at Bradley's. They had a. Um, it's Alaska Brewing, which I appreciate is going to cost you more to get here. Right, it was forty something bucks for a four pack. That's what? stupid. Yeah, so a lot of funny. them are like twenty two bucks now. So it's it's funny because I was having this conversation with Catherine earlier today. We went to uh, Borden Brew and filled up two mini growlers or half awesome. growlers. Excellent sandwich. It's excellent yeah, it's a good sandwich. Spot. Yeah. Right. So we filled up two mini growlers. Right, uh-huh. thirty two ounces each. It was seventeen dollars. That's not bad. It's not bad. But then, so that's four beers though. Right. Two. Yes. Two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I went that very hoppy caterpillar beer, yeah. six pack, seventeen dollars. Right. So why is the draft beer more expensive? I can't than figure the out pack? how they're pricing some of this stuff. Like I love Chapman's beers, but they're getting expensive too. They're like nineteen, twenty bucks for a, a four pack. I went to Gamecraft the other day, nine fifty. They're at the they're brewery. a hit and miss place. I don't disagree. Dude, have you okay? So you know, everywhere opened. Yeah, everywhere is the folks that used to be at. Um, oh shit! Where did they come from? From brewery. From anywhere. Yeah, they came <laughs> they, from they, anywhere. They went to everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> they came from brewery. <laughs> I did not know that. Anyways, they are really nice people. Their beers are really mediocre, but they're nine fifty. See, a why nine fifty? They're brewed right there. You're not yeah. paying travel expenses marketing nothing that's it's the old it's the old right gun whale gun whale oh, couldn't even make it work there interesting gun whale also is meh yeah their I've, bait ball's a good beer though for I, a go-to it's a good beer like I, for just a meh my go-to is slap and tickle oh also a fantastic one yeah slap and pickle slap, slap and, and tickle. tickle yeah there's no pickles near me well that's not side the two that i'm sitting <laughs> But yeah, it is it is getting crazy with how yeah. expensive some of this stuff yeah. is. And it's like Every, I understand every beer was not. Yeah, but expensive. I get stuff's going up. But I mean this is this is silly. Yeah. So I finally joined the mug club at uh Tustin Bruco, which I should have done like five years ago. What does that get you? You get a larger pour for the same price and you uh it's like discounted beer basically. How much is the membership? It was like a hundred and 20 130 bucks lifetime okay but they Forever? only open it yeah they only open it once a year 
oh. around Father's Day. And every time, like my sisters and some of you, just freaking, you go there enough, just get the stupid thing. I'm like, you know, you mm-hmm. waffle on it. And finally, it was like, all right, finally got it. But it's, they also have, oh, what's great is you can get a mug of Pliny. So they'll do Pliny in a mug. And it's like, I think the mug's nine bucks maybe, but it's a, 20 something ounce pour that's a lot of plenty so there you go right that's a lot that's a, that'll set you free that oh, night jesus dude that is like that's two of those uh, uh, i don't know if i want to go anywhere start on an empty stomach and you'll oh, yeah. want it. <laughs> <laughs> but it you know i've been at a couple places where the the draft to your point the draft beer is like nine ten bucks yeah i don't get it I, yeah i don't, I don't get know. it brewery x is still relatively not bad they, they were I think they're like eight bucks right? yeah the seven fifty seven yeah. Yeah. yeah so um and the the kicker is one of the growlers yeah. was the house uh, board and brew blonde. So oh. it wasn't even like a guest. Yeah, tap. yeah, yeah. It was their house beer. Huh. Uh, yeah, I was blown away. Yeah, but that's weird. Fantastic sandwiches. Highly recommend board and brew. Next time you do a brewery X trip, let me know. We'll, I like to hang out in the back and play games. They've okay. Lost, yeah, we bring board games and stuff. The board and brew I saw is doing a brewery X takeover. Ooh. Like, so oh, they'll, the they'll one have, by you? Yeah, I think one of the ones by me is, yeah, is yeah. doing the takeover. Uh, so yeah, the, the one nice thing is if you like beer and you like sandwiches, Borden Brew will actually do different beer takeovers yeah. where that brand will be on tap. So it's kind of nice if you're out for an adventure. The board, it sucks though. The the only one, there's one at Tustin Legacy and yep. otherwise you go to Anaheim Hills. Oh, there's the only two around yeah. here. So Tustin Legacy is easy enough to get to. Yeah. It's just, yeah. We don't usually eat there because it's like, oh shit, you forget. You don't want to go all the way over there. Yeah. We need a good sandwich spot in this area. Don't you have a Hollings Head? Yeah, but have you been to Hollingshead? I mean, it's been f- five, six years. So Maybe another seven. place that's gotten pretty expensive. Really? Great beers. There's beer selections, fantastic. But the sandwiches are like your grandma made you a sandwich still. They're that kind of yep. like, right? Yep. But they're yep. 11 and 12 bucks. Oh, like it's too much money. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So the last time I was there, like, meh. I think in the closer to the circle, right? To have a really good sandwich yeah. place would be awesome. But a board instead, we're getting would do so well in the circle. I, I would prefer they keep the chains out, but we got a freaking Chipotle, which independently sucks. owned and operated. Yeah, yeah. So, the well, we're getting a Hooters, so or a so Hooters Light, a or whatever the hell you. Yeah, Hoots. Yes. <laughs> we were when we were in Tehachapi, our our rule was to not eat at chain restaurants. You yeah, to eat the local culture, and so we were looking at like Yelp reviews and Google reviews and stuff like that, and the places we went to were horrendous. I could not imagine the local culture in Tehachapi is good. Right, and so. We looked at it just as a comparison. The Chipotle in Chipa- uh, in Tehachapi was rated 2.6 stars. That's oh high. Oh, my God. So, and then the place we went to, we went to a restaurant called Thai Hachapi. It was a Thai food restaurant. Okay. Oh, God. That is that is amazing. Wah, wah. It, was, it was rated. Where's Jacob? It, yeah. It was rated really high, like four, you know, yeah. stars or whatever. Trash. And so what we can't figure out is... I'll bet you it's because the locals are rating the local stuff higher than they would a chain. Yeah. Maybe, or the locals can't handle spice or flavor, and therefore Chipotle gets downgraded because it's got too much of stuff they don't like, and they want just... Oh, the Thai place was bl- bland. bland? Yes. Was, it was bland? The it Thai was, place was bland? Dude, the, I had the cashew nut chicken, and it was the saltiest Ugh. ever. It was just so odd. Weird. And so now I'm thinking that... Yelp needs to create like an algorithm where you can look at the reviewers and it weights scores of reviewers that have given reviews over a larger geographic area. Like they're tourists? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That they've been to it more knows places. Their travels. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Rather than somebody that's just reviewing the, the hometown stuff because it's like, I don't know if you have ever had the unfortunate ability to go on a cruise. Once. Uh, yeah. So I'm on a cruise. I've been on two and the food's fine. It's okay. But you're hearing people raving about this is the best food they ever had. Nope. They've never been anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's kind of the same idea with this with this Yelp reviewing. It needs to have some sort of weight or some sort of a way to... If I look at the review and I see that Bob has given it five stars, but Bob has never eaten anywhere farther than 15 miles from where he lives, it's like, right. okay, I don't care about Bob. But then John has been to multiple countries and reviewed a bunch of stuff coast to coast. Okay, his score might be more relevant to my interests. Sounds like you need a job at the Yelps. Mm-hmm. Sounds like we probably need to stop recording over lunchtime because this whole thing has <laughs> been <laughs> mostly food. I know. We, I haven't eaten yet. And actually, on that note, I'm going to go get a beer. 
<laughs> yeah. You'll get your drink. I'll get my food. Yep. Let's get out of here. Hey, nice save space for that meatloaf sandwich, though. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. That's about like 5.30, yeah. 6 o'clock tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'll, have, you'll have room. Yeah. It'll, I'll have it'll settle. All right, kids. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Ungrown Ups podcast. And for this, we apologize. <laughs>